I want to welcome uh, everybody tonight. Uh, I'm with our special resident uh, ant, slash, well, I guess storm in general, um, expert and uh, friend of the uh, stream, uh, Mike Reader, Eureka22422. Uh, do you want to give a brief introduction about yourself, Mike? And then um, you can post some of your, well, your, uh, I guess you're gonna get it started, but you're gonna have a stream pretty soon. But then uh, maybe even a social uh, media handle that will, people will be able to find you pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I'll I'll get that all set up and everything. But yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, so I've been playing Legacy for I don't know, close to a little over ten years now. So I started off when I was in uh, like high school, and so I started with something like Merfolk, right? Because it was an easy deck to get into back in the time, but as soon as I got into Storm, I've been playing it ever since. So I've been playing Storm uh, since Polluted Delta was like $150 each back when, before they got reprinted, right? So mm. Polluted Delta was more expensive than Lion's Eye Diamond back then. So wow, what that, that's what I got. Yeah, I, I think it was like 2010, maybe? 2011? Wow. I don't know, something like that. It was before they got reprinted when Onslaught Deltas were extremely expensive so i actually played test for a minute before i went to ant because i couldn't afford the deltas to play ant so i played test instead and uh as soon as i got the deltas i never went back except for a little bit of dabbling but oh, but yeah wow. so i mean that's a little bit about me um i mostly play legacy i've dabbled in some other formats but legacy is where i where i like to play so that's phenomenal was this when well, I guess two questions, right, that come to mind. Uh, one, what made Merfolk the uh, the deck of choice to start off in Legacy? And two, uh, was this when Silence was the default protection spell in, uh, uh, in, in TS? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Merfolk was, it was mostly a cost thing, right? All you needed was the Force of Wills at the time and then the Muta Vaults. Funny enough, the Muta Vaults were actually one of the more expensive cards in the deck back then. Mm -hmm. So... That was, uh, it was mostly a cost thing, and I actually got myself into show and tell for a little bit, and then got annoyed that I would cast show and tell, or cast sneak attack and attack once with an Emrakul and lose, so I wanted a deck that had a little bit more finishing power, or when I finally comboed, I won, and that's when I got on Storm, so. That and then, uh, yeah, Tess definitely played with Silence back then, that that was the thing, it, it had Silence in it for sure. Well, I don't know why it's doing this. Why is it not? Okay, that's fine. Oh, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll do this manually. Uh, okay, I guess we will build this from scratch. Um, here are the obvious, I guess, cards. And then I'll have you, I guess, briefly do uh, a deck tech. Yeah, so you want to wait till you build it and then I will? Uh, you can get started because I'm... A little bit slow here. Yeah, no, all good. So so this is Ant, right? The difference between this and, like, Tess is we have a bunch of discard spells and past in flames, whereas Tess has a lot of artifact mana and, like, Chrome Mox, Mox Opal, and they play Rite of Flame, and their protection spells are Veil of Summer and Galvanic Relay, right? So instead of playing discard spells and past in flames as their engine, they play the anti-counter, basically, spells uh, as an alternative. So... The reason I like the green splash is kind of twofold, right? Obviously, we get access to Vala Summer. I only play one in this list. I find that it's not... It's it's kind of like the seventh discard spell, if you will, in this list, but it's also kind of good against some combo decks as well. Um, and then also access to Ave. A lot of people meme on Ave and they think that it's a joke, but like Ave not dying to most of the board wipes that exist in the format, right? If you think of... Um, if you think of like end the festivities, EE, different things like that, uh, most of those cards kill empty the Warrens. And so empty the Warrens is not as good. And also there are weird things that come up with like being able to win on lower storm counts, right? Empty the Warrens, you need a pretty significant storm count with Ave, like a storm count of three, four or five can sometimes steal games, right? So uh, there's also some cool interactions with like Wishclaw Talisman into Ave doesn't get hit by a Flusterstorm, right? Because Wishclaw's an artifact and Ave's a creature. So there's some other cool situations that come up where where you can dodge certain other hate cards. So that's uh, why that, green. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll look I was gonna, first. Go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's why green. And then the second part of green is obviously with Carpet of Flowers. Carpet of Flowers is pretty sweet against uh, the Delver matchup and also a lot of the blue decks. Abrupt Decay with most of the, some of the blue decks running around with like Counterbalance in them. Obviously, Chinellus of the Void and some of the other cards. Like Deafening Silence is also kind of on the uptick in some of the white shells. They have quite a few Deafening Silence and being able to answer those without... Like, if you think of it, the blue decks that play Deafening Silence, they want to... They'll just counter your your uh, bounce spell, right? Because if they keep Deafening Silence in play, you can't win. So when you think of how you win the game, uncounterable removal spells like Abrupt Decay and then also Besage you in green mm -hmm. are really important for removing problematic permanence. That, make, that all makes a lot of sense because it's almost like they're one-two combo, right? Like, one is... Or A plus B, right? A is Deafening Silence or Canonist, and B is... Uh, a uh, protection spell, right? Like, whether that be, like, Force of Will or not. Exactly. And then you still have access to all the cool blue cards that everyone wants. Like, Dress Down has been an all-star since it's come out. Being able to answer Oof, being able to answer uh, a lot of the other problematic permit or creatures and also multiple ones at a time is amazing. And then your Fluster Storms are basically for the combo matchups. Uh, your Echoing Truth are just a ca and Chain of Vapors are just catch-all answers, right? So... Really, it's it's a pretty well-rounded deck. It has a sideboard game against most things, but if you take a look at six of those cards in there, the Carpets, the Abrupt Decays, and the Besaju are all for making the Delver matchup better, which it's already a decent matchup, but those cards definitely swing it in our favor a bit. So, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, can I get a quick check that this is the right uh, configuration? I took a best guess, and I based on the cards that are available in the sideboard 16, I feel like one of the Besages probably main deck. Is that accurate? Yeah, so I have one Besage in the main. It does come up from time to time. Um, I've gotten to kill Dark Depths a couple of times. Game one, which is pretty sweet, right? I've gotten to kill Chalices, and it's there in a pinch against a Chalice. You can tutor it up with Wishclaw Talisman and stuff. It, it's not super, super relevant, but I feel like it comes up enough to where I want it. It, it can be a flex slot. If you'd rather just play the second Veil of Summer... Uh, no one would fault you for that. You can play the second Veil of Summer in that slot as well. Um, in the main, but you mean the sideboard, right? I'm assuming. In in the main, you can take the Besage out of the main and put a second Veil in the main, and okay. and that's also fine. Mm -hmm. But I I've been messing around with Besage, and I've been pretty happy with it. So, um, so I'm sure you know who Jax is, right? Uh, resident, also another resident, uh, turn one combo player. Uh, he was the one that actually told me that he thinks Besage is like the second coming. Uh for combo decks, and I, you know, I, I had kind of tempered expectations because for a long time I wanted Disenchant on a land so I can reclaim her for it, and then when it got printed, I was just like, oh, I can't tutor for it, but, <laughs> but it seems like it's pretty good, and immediately, like, the card has completely revolutionized, I think, the deck because it means your sideboard can be so much more flexible in Elves, and I'm sure, um, same thing here, right, it's a land drop. Exactly. And also when you think about it, some of the matchups you bring it in, mm -hmm. uh, Carpet's okay. Like you can bring it in as another green source just to have access to another green source. And then on top of that, you have Ave in your deck, which is triple green. So you have a lot higher chance of being able to cast Ave with access to Besaju in the deck as well, which is kind of cool. It does come up to cast Ave, just hard cast it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think that it, it's just a better catch-all answer than some of the others. And Abrupt Decay is a little bit... Uh, can be a little bit tight on mana sometimes, so I, yeah, I think it's super useful. No, for sure. Like you don't have to sell me on Ave because I think it might have even been you. But ooh, thank you for the jar, uh, the raid jar, dog. Uh, I might have even been you that like cast an Ave for like three or four, and I sit, or I, maybe it's higher than that. But I just can't win through it because natural order map's not enough now, right? Thank you for the exactly on cosmic hawk. Yep. Uh, so I wanted to thank. Uh, Jarvis for the raid right now and welcome everybody who's coming in from his stream where we have special guest uh, Mike Reader um, Eureka22422 uh, joining us tonight for a ant stream uh, I have notably not touched this deck in quite a minute so of course I need some training wheels here with me to uh, to run through the stream um, is there anything since uh, the audience from Jarvis is tuning in right now anything you want to add uh, Reintroduce yourself uh, to, the, uh, to the viewers, Mike. Yeah, I mean, just real quick highlight. I basically only play Legacy. I've been playing Legacy for a really long time, uh, over 10 years, and I've been playing Ant almost the entire time. So uh, 
Obviously, I, I've been playing it quite a bit, but the new iteration of it with Abe is kind of exciting to me, and I, I think it's really cool to have someone like Demonic Tutors, right, Ed playing the Grixis-only version. Uh, I think it's cool to see the different versions of it and kind of see how it kind of changes over time, right? So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited to get into this. Let's uh, hopefully not not roll into 8-cast all day long. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll queue up and we'll answer uh, questions as we go. I guess the first question that's rolling, uh, rolling in right now is talking about some of the other builds. That actually just reminds me, um, I did see this Dizzy spell plus like Allosaur Shepherd. Uh, obviously, there's a Grixis build that uh, Ed has been playing and having a lot of success with. Um, we'll yeah. So, so that the guy playing the Dizzy spell, I'm convinced. I've seen his paper version of the deck. He's got beta dual lands and stuff. I'm I'm pretty convinced he just has some really cool versions of those cards and he likes playing it. But <laughs> that being said, uh, yeah, the different the different versions, right? So, like the the advantage of like the Grixis version that you see running around is the mana base is a little bit more stable. You don't have four colors, so Wasteland doesn't kind of get you as bad, right? You you can play two basic islands pretty easily and you have uh, Burning Wish, which is really powerful. It adds two more tutors that aren't hit by Null Rod effects, right? So you have access to that, and you also have access to Burning Wish in order to get you out of weird situations that you might not be able to get out of with Wish Claw. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the draw to the Grixis versions. It's a little bit more streamlined. Uh, the Japanese one with Grim Tutor, I haven't... I haven't seen that much lately. I'm not really sure. I think the whole idea of why you play Grim Tutor is you just want an unconditional tutor effect. Obviously, it costs life, but you don't have to be hellbent in order to, to use it. This is a great hand. And, yeah. Oh, we're playing against... Uh, well, rich. but at least this means it's Delver, right? Isn't this Rich? Yeah, it is Rich Kelly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's at least it's Delver. Yeah, I, I think uh, we should be favored from what I understand in the matchup. And I think if it were me, I'd probably go fetch uh, off the Misty into Preordain, right? Yeah, we, we definitely want to fetch a basic island here. It's not because we care about uh, Wasteland right now because we have a ton of lands, but we just don't want to get tempoed out with a Wasteland. The you Wasteland know. destroying our lands isn't going to kill us, but yeah, you can just cast Preordain first. Mm -hmm. Preordain before Ponder if you don't have... Like, if you're not planning on shuffling, let's take one Brainstorm and I, we can probably push the other one. I don't know that we have enough time to cast both Brainstorms this game. We'll see, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jarvis ran into... I was watching Jarvis's stream earlier, and Jarvis ran into uh, Callum and then uh, Strifo, and, and now mm -hmm. we're running into <laughs> to Cali, so it's, right, it's right. going to be an interesting one. <laughs> What did he flip to? Days? Okay. Uh, yes, he flipped to Days. Yeah. Alright. He's gonna play like a DRC? Let's see. So I think if it were me, I'd probably leave this next turn off of Ponder. Do you, do you play the fetch before Pondering here? I would assume so, right? Yeah, actually, this LED is pretty good. So, you can lead off of Ponder. Uh, I don't think Rich is on Delver, so he's not on the. I don't think he's on the Stifles. You can lead off on Ponder. You could also brainstorm it. They're they're basically all okay. Mm -hmm. So that's all we need to win the game. We just need that Wish Claw and a, and a discard spell. Mm -hmm. So I would take uh, the Wish Claw and then the Ponder. So put Besage you, then Ponder, then Wish Claw. Take the Wish Claw. And so. I, I think that I'm pretty incentivized. We can pass a turn. I'm pretty incentivized to end step brainstorm here to just try and take a disc or like a counter spell out of their hand, mm -hmm. um, because we're so close to winning the game here. Makes sense. So you're saying yeah, you you, you can, but because we don't want to get wasteland or Romario, we're probably not doing both of those things. Is the reason that Ponder's okay first here. He and didn't still shuffle. Want to Is that accurate or no? Um, we actually only need a discard spell here to win, so I don't really, I don't really care about that ponder anymore. So we want to fetch then. Yeah, we're gonna fetch. Are we gonna fetch? Uh... Just fetch an underground sea. Oh, yeah. and then we can. There's only one basic. I just realized. 
there's a basic swamp and a basic island. Oh, we went to our turn. Okay. Uh, Cass, you can, we can just uh, play a land and play Brainstorm. What, what, I guess you leave land there because you want to anyways, and then I, I guess we'll put this back. Yeah, and if they, like, double daze you for some weird reason, like, I, there's just no reason to lose that. Okay, so we can put back Underground C, and we can put back... An LED, right? Uh, or, or one of the LEDs. Pedal. No, we want Petal, because Petal's... We know they have a daze in their hand. Petal's going to help us play around daze. So we can play out a Petal here. And then we can, so this is, this is kind of weird. So we can either cantrip or we can play out talisman and see if it makes it. Let me think for one second. I, I think let's wanna... just fetch ponder. Yeah. I feel, yeah. Because if the, the upside of finding a discard spell is just so high, we can just get another dual land because they're not going to have, we're not going to have two more turns. So just get another underground. See, we don't, we don't need green game one. No, I've never played Forest in Ant Shade. Yeah, that Forest doesn't seem great. We just shuffle this, yeah, obviously. Okay. Um, so we basically have to pass the turn here. Um, yeah, we just have to pass the turn here. Game one can be kind of rough if they go double Delver like this. Like this is kind of the worst case scenario. Makes sense. Sometimes you sometimes you just get Delvered. And and look at all these cantrips we cast and we haven't seen a single discard spell. Which is just pretty unlikely. We're playing six, right? We're six five. plus the veil, yeah. The seven. Yeah, they probably have like days, at least one force, maybe two forces at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, I feel like we have no choice now, right? Yeah, no, we don't have a choice. I'm just trying to think of, like, the most likely way to bait them into doing something uh, wrong. I think uh, we just lead on Cabal Ritual here. We already have Threshold. And, like, maybe they think they can tight us on mana. Okay. So now we just play the Talisman out. Uh, if they, There's no reason to, like, play everything else out because they don't know the texture of our hand. Mm -hmm. If they force this, we, can't, we obviously can't win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't win. But, like, playing it here means that we might have another action spell. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like, Rich is a really good player, too, so... Yeah, yeah, Rich is definitely going to counter it. Yeah, uh, five, or four or five cantrips and not finding a discard spell is pretty rough. Okay, so this one is pretty easy. Carpets, Decays, and Besaju come in. You cut Ad Nauseam like you did. Uh, you can cut... Probably a, a petal, right? Or maybe Puritans? Yeah, so you can cut one petal. You can cut one Cabal Ritual. Interesting, okay. I would have guessed that. Cabal, one Cabal Ritual, it's really funny, you'll find out, is like probably the most cut card in the deck. Um, and we need the Abrupt Decays in case he does have Chalice. I, I don't know what Rich's list is. If you're for sure he doesn't. Or not Chalice. Um, counterbalance. Uh, counterbalance uh, is in a lot of these Delver decks. We still need two cuts, though. Yeah, yeah. So you can cut uh, a, a preordain. You can just cut both preordains because they bring, bring in so many revs. You can just cut the, the extra preordains. That's fine. Yeah, I usually, like, when I played this deck before, um, granted, I don't have the experience that you have. I usually just cut down on the weakest cantrips post-board because um, you just don't have the time, right? Like, you, you brought in more reactive spells, and then I just think you... Don't want to get too slow, so to speak. Yeah, that's definitely true. And against Delver, like I was saying, with the blasts, we, we're reducing the blast targets, which make it kind of better. And then also, the cards that we're bringing in are kind of cards that replace those preordains, right? So, like, if we draw a carpet of flowers instead of the preordain, like, that's that's good. That's what we want. Right, right. So, this hand's, this hand's, like, good, but it's very, very close. We have to get a little bit lucky with this. So... Um, I think we keep it, yep, and I think we just run out the... The carpet, right? Yeah, I think I like running out the carpet because it plays around days, and they don't have a choice but to play a, an island uh, on turn one. I guess so. the question here is, are you getting trap? Yeah, you get trap. Okay. Because if they if they do force this, that you can still ponder off the trap.
I would think the next turn we're leading with Misty and then playing the Ponder, right? Well, we can just make blue off of this carpet. Sure, I mean that's it's right. kind of free. Yeah. And also, just in worth noting, daze, you right? want yeah, you want to make mana in case they daze in the first main phase. This is actually really good. Um, um what we should just pick up the brainstorm now because they don't have rev up. And we should just cast it. So uh, the other two don't matter because we're going to brainstorm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was thinking if I'm just being clean here, it's going to be this. The order is this way backwards. Yeah. And then play a land to play around days. And then let's just brainstorm now. There's an argument. Since we have carpet, it's not a big deal. But there's an argument for playing out the delta in case we want to get basic swamp because the basic island's already in our hand. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, we, yeah, I didn't even think about that, but that's smart. But we can just put back islands and pedal here. And then, do you think Rich does, does it, do you have any idea if he plays Stifle? I don't think he does. No, he does not. As far as okay, then, then we can just pass the turn. Yeah, we have, if I'm counting right, five mana. Six mana against total, so we're one short. Yeah. Well, and so if he plays out something, uh, okay, EI, that's fine. So, like, we want to fetch and ideally find, like, one more discard spell and Ave. Like, if we find one more discard spell, we can just Ave him here, and there's no way he'll win. win. Yeah, there's no way he'll win. I've been on the other side of that, where, like, normally these Empty the Warm plans is not good enough for against Elves, but Ave is suddenly good enough. Ave, interesting enough, uh, has made Archon of Balance reach worse as well what did he surgical our ponders yeah okay it's fine i think that's fine yeah that actually makes his life lower which is not super relevant but it could be it's kind of interesting though here that he's surgical because usually that's not a thing you want to do with against ant yeah so the hard part i think from his position is he needs to, i think he's doing it to understand the texture of our hand mm -hmm. Um, because the hard part of playing about uh, playing against Ant when you're playing like a deck like Delver is you have to know the texture of their hand, otherwise you're gonna make incorrect plays. So there's a lot of value in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ooh, like so uh, we can just make we can make black mana. Um, so we can cast Thought Seize here. And just hope there's only one free counter spell. If there's multiple, it's kind of rough. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, obviously that's okay. I feel so like I'm have to go for it still here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking if there's a way that we don't have to crack Lion's Eye Diamond. So we have three, four, five, six, seven mana, five mana. We do not have to crack Lion's Eye Diamond. So just play the Polluted Delta. I feel like we can do that last, right? Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. You actually want to play LED last in case... I, I mean, there, there's very small corner cases that people play weird cards, but probably not in this matchup. That makes I'm sense. just thinking, like, normal order of operations, force of vigor and stuff. You don't you don't want to get caught by that. So if we if we use this, you don't have to fetch. You can actually just cast this. And if um, he dazes, then we can crack we can crack diamond. If he doesn't daze... Uh, well, actually, hold on. Do we, we have a third green source. Yeah, we have fetch land. So if yeah. he doesn't do anything, then we don't have to... Okay, so we just get Ave here, and then fetch Ave. Right? Well, actually, stop, stop, stop. We could have tendrils him. That was my bad. Oh. I miscounted the storm. It's okay. We're going to win this anyway. Just fetch and uh, cast Ave. We should have just tendrils him here. I guess if he has one force of will, though, it actually could have been dicey. Because one force of will would put him to one. Right? He goes to 13, and he takes 12. So, this is actually safer than one force of will. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. The I'm power of I, uh Hey, Soulstrong, how's it going? Thank you for following JT, uh, LOL. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think for the most part, my intuition like match the the play that you want. You ended up going with. So I think we run it back, right? There's no play, change on play draw. No. Yeah, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna go for it, go for it, and I'll just step in if you ask. No, no, I I, I don't want yeah. to uh, be too slow. Where so in the 
interest of the stream and my opponent here. I don't want to. <laughs> this hand is like super close. I'm just trying to think. So, if we draw an action spell in the first two, like two to three turns, or a cantrip, we're okay. What's your instinct? My instinct here is to keep. Okay. All right, let's try it. Would obviously. You Obviously, you understand we could just fall on our face here. It's really close. I don't. I don't think I would mulligan it because we can go carpet, and if he counters it, then we can go like land dark ritual thought mm -hmm. So, but this is actually close. Hold on. Hold on. This is. It's actually tough because we, I don't know that we want to play carpet in today's. I'm thinking. I two seasons, but. Yeah, but I think we go by you. Carpet. Because we have two seizes, I think that's okay. If he goes, like, Day's Wasteland, that's, like, the worst timeline. Mm -hmm. But I think that's okay. Yeah, okay, he fawned it. That's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. He's only got three cards. If we draw a tutor here, we're, we're golden. I actually think, looking at hindsight, given that we had two Thossies, maybe we should have lived with the Thossies. What do you think? So, the thing is, is... What's your thought sees? If your thought sees gets dazed, it's like the same thing. But if he wastelands us here, that's oh. the that's the rub. So I think we have to cantrip for. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because he could rub here. Um, this is really close. Do you want to loot? Do you want to like almost lose to wasteland, or do we want? I think he's much more likely to have rub here. He didn't cast he a cantrip or anything. Too. I'm I'm more likely to. Lose I think I want a thought sees, and if he has another wasteland, uh, it's we a good beat. It. It's a good beat. Yeah. Okay. Right, well, that's good. that's good for us. So hopefully he doesn't top deck wasteland, and then next turn we can just cantrip. Mm -hmm. And we we have perfect information here. He flipped to a ponder, so well, kind of perfect information. So he has two lands plus something. Did he he didn't shuffle? Okay. Probably. So like at at most he has fluster or daze. Like at most. Would you seize again here or? No, we're cantripping here one hundred percent. Uh, are we gonna play a land? Play a land to play around days. Just don't don't fetch. Just just cast a, a ponder. Um, I think we just take another ponder and fetch ponder. We don't need the mana. Would you value so the uh, rit? Actually, this is. I think it's like this, right? It doesn't matter because we're gonna we're gonna shuffle. Uh, we're gonna sh okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I I meant like we're. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant we're gonna I shuffle off polluted delta. That's my bad. No, you're good. I, that's what I, I was thinking you, you meant, but... Um... It's 100% my bad. Yeah, I think we were on the same page. It's just miscommunication. I think I wanted to keep the ponder, shuffle the rest with the fetch land. Yeah, so that's why I was saying the, the order of the other two didn't matter, but that was my bad. I should have communicated that more clearly. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we're on the same page. I wanted to seize, I think... What, would you have seized right there, fetched again with a delta? Yeah, right. No, no, I would have pondered because they have cantrips, right? So you don't ever seize if you only have one seize until the kill turn. Mm -hmm. What's he gonna dragon us? Oh, counterbalance. Yeah, that's Ooh. pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Okay, so uh, we no, we just play out a pedal here because he pondered and did not shuffle, right? Or did he? Okay, cool. Now we can ponder. So that that dark ritual was free. Or I mean the petal was free to just like dispose. Ooh, Ave. Hmm. We don't have another cantrip though. But we want that count the abrupt decay. So let's just draw A the land, abrupt right? decay. No, we don't need the land. How are we gonna cast Ave without the we're not. We're going to shuffle Ave and the land. Okay, I see. I'm just thinking. We have like two more turns. Yeah. We're just going to gonna pass here. We have to draw pretty well off of this fetch. So upkeep, we can fetch drop or end step. It doesn't matter. Um, I think we just pass. Hopefully he doesn't have a bolt.
he's gonna get a font. We don't care about that. We have a thought sees. Uh, notably, playing the fetch land actually wasn't good here because we can't fetch and thought sees. So we let this go, right? We have to kill yeah. the guy off, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Romar is making a joke because I messed it all up last So, time. Abrupt Decay? Uh, I didn't forget Romar. I, I lost us multiple games last time through the Ponder. Did he reveal? No, he didn't. Okay. Uh, this is really, really hard. So, notably, we have to draw a tutor. Just draw the tutor first, and then it's a discussion. You didn't draw the tutor. Right, we're dead. Man! <laughs> I'm lucky. It happens. Was that game three? Mm hmm. Romario, rate rate our storm skills. How was it? <laughs> Notably, we misclicked one. I'm not sure it would have mattered too much because we drew the ponder anyways. Um, but it definitely slowed us down. Wait, we drew another ponder. No, we, we the turn we accidentally shuffled when we didn't mean to. We drew a pawn. Oh, got it. That. Got it. The sand's sweet. If we don't draw a land, we could do stuff on turn two. We keep right. Yeah, three, five, six, seven. So we have enough. If we can go turn one, thought sees, and if we draw anything, but uh, ooh, don't thought sees us. It could be uh, uh doomsday. What well, we won game two, Romario? All right. You had a basic, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he could brainstorm here. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I forget. It's, it's Mike Reed, right? Yeah, Reed. Yep. Okay. I wasn't sure if you preferred, like, Mikey or anything else like that. Nah, Mike's good. Big or bipolar bear? Let's, let's see what you're on. Ooh. So, it's tough. So, like, Brainstorm technically is the only thing that probably, like, leads to a kill next turn. Mm -hmm. But Burning Wish is the only action spell. I think I think we take Brainstorm here because we're pretty close to a kill. And if he just takes the next turn to Ponder or, like, play Defense Grid, uh, we if we draw, like, LED, obviously we're absolutely just golden. So, to answer the chat, uh, Shade920, yeah, I would play uh, DNT with XJ Cloud if he uh, was interested. DNT is also a deck I'm actually more familiar with too. I, I play, I used to play it a lot, but the sixty card version before, right? Uh, can you pop, line, right? Can you pop out that window uh, of the cards we know? Yeah, sure. All right, so you played Verdant. Okay, so we actually can, we can win here. Yeah, I think we go just like, pedal first, and then Dark Ritual, right, later on? No, 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 no. Um, we just tutor for a third Dark Ritual here. And then, uh, kill them. Oh, oh I so see. So, tu tutor for a Dark Ritual, and then we can Dark Ritual for, uh, and tutor for Piff, and then triple Dark Ritual, tutor for Tendrils. So, like... Did he oh. shuffle his ponder? He did not. Okay, so like here's here's where we can decide: Do we want to go for Adnaz to play around uh, Veil, vale, or do we just want to kill but lose to Veil? Vale? What's what's your preference? Uh, I'm willing to lose to Veil. Vale. That's okay. With okay, me. then then just Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, and Tutor for Past in Flames. One of my favorite lines is actually the, uh, in response to the Cabal, th uh, to retain part of Crack LED to hit threshold. Uh, what do we, is Passive Flames a kill here? Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very much a kill. We can actually loop in uh we can actually loop in a thoughtsies here just to make sure we're not, or like there isn't one, but because we can actually add nausea maybe, I think. Hold on. So two, four, six, eight, six. So yeah, we can thoughtsies real quick first. And then if they don't have it, then we kill them. If they do, we can add nauseam. Yeah, he's got Veil. Or Brainstorm, but probably Veil. Unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So Three, five, seven, five. Been, uh, what would the other get ad nauseum? Yeah, it would have been get ad nauseum, which game no no stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no. We can we can we can go ad nauseum right now. Dark Rit, uh or actually stop, we can Ave. I think we just Ave here, hold on. So Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Infernal Tutor for LED. Infernal Tutor hold priority crack it and Ave them. Because that gives them one turn to kill us. LED and then uh, Infernal Tutor or crack it for green and then Infernal Tutor for Ave. LED, there you go. Yeah, that makes sense. So so now they have one turn to kill us. Make sure you use all black for the Infernal Tutor. And yeah. What was the other line? I forget. The other line is the ad nauseum without getting rid of all of our like this actually worked out. Had I done the math and knew we could Ave here, I would have just done this. Mm -hmm. um, but the other line is just ad nauseum without committing everything. Because we have a Veil in our deck, mm -hmm. and the Veil in theory could protect us from dying next turn. Mm, gotcha. So if we can find like Petal plus Veil off ad nauseum, yeah, we're just going to get ad nauseum here maybe. Right of Flame ad nauseum. Six, I guess. So you're saying the other line would have been ad nauseum potentially into the veil summer, and then um, so we don't die on their turn. I mean, if they have exactly, yeah, exactly. I we think this is about all we could hope for, though. Well, we technically still could have uh, ad nauseum there, right? Like th there was nothing that was stopping us from doing it again. They can't add nauseum here, though. So what are they doing? Oh, they're what are they doing? Getting an LED and then burning wish for echo. I think that I think that's what they have to do. Yeah, we could have taken their wish shade. I was just thinking my thought was that the brainstorm is what gives them the most cards to find a way to either kill us net that turn or find a veil because they play for veil, right? So we we didn't want them. Oh, they couldn't do it. Good. I I think the only question I had was in the other line. Um, so if I'm reading it right. Uh, we can get the veil, but then what's stopping us from doing that line again here? Like we, we I know we went for Ave, but we, technically could have we done that as well? Yeah, but with two petals out of our deck, and we already made our land drop, like ad nauseum into petal plus veil is not like I, I think passing the turn and, and saying you have to kill us now is better. So had I done the math, I think I would have actually taken this line. But I didn't realize we could we could uh, Piff, Thoughtseize, and still Ave. Like, I think that that line is technically just more deterministic, right? I, I see with only With only one Veil and two Petals in the deck, I just think it's too unlikely that we that we get that. Um, it, Surgical's not good enough against them. It's really just those two. And then what are we boarding up? Probably Ave? Mm. Or you leave it in? Ave's good because of exactly what you just saw. They play four Veil. Oh, um, sure. So you can board out actually a basic Swamp. No, oh, we want cantrips. Sense. Yeah, board out basic Swamp and board out Beseju and then leave the cantrips in. Yeah, this is fine. I think it's too cheeky to, like, uh, bounce their Chrome Mox in response to an Infernal Tutor and stuff like that. But well, they don't play Infernal <laughs> Tutor; they play the Burning Wishes. But I think we have to keep. Well, uh, actually, we have two blue cards we can't cast. Would you keep this? This is really hard with double Thoughtseize on the draw. I think I would keep this, but it's very like it, again, we could get punished pretty hard. But we basically have two turns to draw. And we boarded out basic swamp, not island. So right, right, right. no, I'm, I'm, I, I know like part of the risk of playing combo is 
you're gonna accept you're gonna get blown out every once in a while. So it is what it is. Let me. I'm not. Can we have a fluster storm if we draw blue, and we actually notably now are literally one dark ritual from killing. So I, there's just so many upsides to this. All right, they have veil. They were getting veiled. Yeah. Yeah, we might just die on turn two. Let's find out. Oof. I feel for black mages now. I, I've been yeah. a few times out of elves, but not not as much as we're getting right now. Yeah. They don't have any black mana. Weird. <coughs> this is like one of the weird parts of this deck. This deck doesn't play a Bayou, I don't think. Mm -hmm. You mean Which, TS? Yeah, TS doesn't play a Bayou. Um... Are we dead? Relay? Okay. Now, if we draw a blue source, we might still be okay. Test did TES used to did play by you. Can you pop out that window? Yeah. There was once not too long ago they played five colors. Yeah, I don't I don't I, I maybe they did used to play it. I'm pretty sure their current list doesn't play it though. They have an echo. Okay. That's actually fine for us. Yeah, our hand's not. Good. Oh, all right. Brain. Well, if we find a brain, if we brainstorm into a kill, like, if they whiff on on mana, because they already played a land. If they whiff on artifact mana, they can't even veil us here. They need they need two artifacts here or a kill. I don't know that I would have done that if I was them. Mm -hmm. Now, would you brainstorm off the pedal just so that we can potentially fetch on the same trip? It's not worth it, right? It's so close. We have Dark Ritual in our hand. I'm actually... I, I don't think we're winning the game if we pass because they have their their thing. I actually think it's okay, too. This is like, ooh, wait, actually, stop. We can... Three, four, five. We, we can, can actually just though. add Nas off of... Because this is th two, three, four, five, right? Yeah, so the question is, is we have to hit a pedal to keep going, or we can brainstorm if we find a plus two mana. We obviously add Nas a little bit easier... Yeah, so the least risky play is to just cast Adnaz. If we do find a, a plus two, like a dark ri another dark ritual, yeah, I think we just I think we just cast Adnaz since we already have the tutor in our hand. I, I think the percentages are low, right? To, to, to plus two mana because this is down one, right? And we have to go two to make it eat worth it. Exactly. Yeah, I think we just cast it. Plus, we already have, like I said, have the infernal tutor in our hand, so we just need to find pedal plus or yeah, double pedal or. Underground, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even pedal plus like a, a fluster or something might be okay. There's the pedal. Give me a dark ritual, please. Uh, we just need Pretty we just good. need another LED. No, no, no. We need another LED or uh, a dark ritual. An LED is enough. Keep going. Pop out the window, it's easier to see. How do you pop out the window? I uh, hit that where it shows 11 cards on your, oh, I see what you're saying. Below your window. Yeah, 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 there you go. That. Yeah, hit yes. All right, hold on. Do, we don't have a Cabal Ritual, right? So, one, so we can IT for LED. We want another. Just keep going. We can't die yet. There you go. Uh, We don't need to. I'm just trying to think. I don't think we need to keep going. Three, four, seven, so four, five, six, like six, seven. No, we don't need to. We don't need to keep going. So just pedal dark ritual, um, and then you can infernal tutor for another. He's conceding. Okay, perfect. Makes it easier on us. Yeah, you can you can infernal tutor for another lion's eye diamond, and then talisman double crack LEDs for tendrils. It's enough. Yeah, that makes sense because with every infernal tutor, that that becomes a, a bad cabal ritual, right? Exactly. Makes sense. Hopefully, uh, the chat is learning as much as I am here. I'm obviously uh, unrusting here myself, so to speak, right? I think if we can yeah. go three two in this league, I'll be pretty happy. Yeah. Hey, I mean, we beat the we beat the the mirror with four veils in it, so that's got to be good, right? They it, have four it is veils in it. From what I understand, too, right? I think Ant is not favored in the matchup, right? From what I understand. Yeah, I I think. 
generally speaking, uh, Tess is a turn faster, and now that they're playing Vale, it's mm. it's pretty awkward. Mm. Um, but it's a blowout they, problem. Yeah, they also do rely on things like Galvanic Relay and stuff sometimes, so I think it, it, it depends. I, I think it's... I end up being pretty close to 50-50 against it, but I'm not sure that that's probably the actual... Uh, how good's Ant versus DNT? So, it's a good matchup, but game one can be pretty awkward because you're forced into having a really quick kill if they have a Thalia hand, right? Like, the majority of the time you don't beat Thalia. So, you either have to win on turn one on the draw or turn two on the play, um, game one. But obviously they have no interaction if you do that, so... Yeah, having played that matchup from, um, more so from the DNT side... I would say Ant is favored, but it's high variance. Like, you can easily lose because, like, let's just say you ha keep a generically good hand, they don't know, and you don't know uh, they're on DNT, and suddenly they're on the play with Dahlia. It, it can be problematic. Yeah. Yes, Dress Down's excellent against them. Um, dress Down, and I, I also play a Massacre, and obviously the Abrupt Decays and Chain of Vapors. Sand's excellent. Yeah, actually, um, low key, you, you probably already know this. One of the reasons why uh, Archon of Valor's Reach has fallen a little bit out of favor at the moment um, is also because uh, for those Ant players who are on the Green Splash, uh, one, Ape gets through it if you have enough uh, artifact mana, and uh, two, there's Dress Down, right? Whereas the other, Grixis build typically doesn't run Dress Down because they have the Burning Wish plan. The problem is Burning Wish for, um, I forgot Ooh. the card. Are we but... getting oopsed? Huh? Are we getting oopsed right now? I think we are. <laughs> no, oh, no, reanimator. Oh. This is also notably a bad matchup. Yeah. So, actually, I was going to say, um, I forget the bounce spell. It's like, oh, consigned to Oblivion, right? Like, notably, that does not beat Archon. Even though you Burning Wish for it, it's an instant, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this matchup's very weird because there's times where you're on the play where you just play out your artifact mana and you, like, if we were on the play, we brainstorm you into another see, land. Two, two Gristle Brand, by the way, or no? Yeah, just just concede now. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure but if we, because uh, there are some decks that can beat it. I wasn't sure if we were one of those. We are if we have, like, our artifact mana in play. So, like, if we were on the play there, we can brainstorm and play out our artifacts and put Infernal Tutor on top and, like, mini tendrils them to kill them, mm -hmm. right? Like, that, it's a very reasonable way to win. Mm -hmm. So, Dress Down's really good in this matchup because they don't have any way to interact on our turn. Mm -hmm. So, if you do it, it's a time walk. Mm -hmm. uh, Chain of Vapors, you bring it in for the Serenity uh, or the Angel that stops Sorceries. Cluster Storms are good. Surgical's good. Mm -hmm. Echo Troops good too, right? Or no? I don't think you need it. Let me look at how it maps real quick again. So take Ave out. We Ave Ave can't win. Right. Um, no Basaju presumably. He, right. Basaju and Basic Swamp can come out again. One Cabal Ritual can come out again. What about Veil vale of Summer? Veil vale of Summer is good because of Grief and we're on the play. Okay. Um, Maybe two Preordained? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you don't want... Echo and Truth, the problem is you still want to kill them really quickly, right? Like, they can't beat a turn one kill, so you don't want to dilute your deck too much. Mm -hmm. And Veil of Summer's... Veil of Summer's kind of like a time walk against them, right? Because if, even if they put Grizzlebrand into play, if they can't make you discard spells, this hand Ooh. is... We got the Surgical. Yeah, this hand's really close, though, because it doesn't actually do anything. I think we, I think we have to keep it. Yeah, I think we have to keep it, but it's not actually that good. Yeah, you can put Sage Animate dead, but I think that that's like a that's like a high a high roll play, right? Like that doesn't happen in reality. Yeah, I I've had it happen, but it's just you have to kind of get lucky, right? The way it played out, like oftentimes you you want to tap out, and especially yeah, that, with elves, but maybe not as much here. Yeah, that's like a game one situation too that happens a lot more, right? Like if if you happen to get it game one, this is actually good because they're probably gonna in two men step, which means our surgical is gonna get turned on. Nice. So I'm just thinking really quick. So yeah, let's just pass. The, yeah, the problem is this. We see. Yeah. It doesn't matter what deck I play. I keep drawing the win condition. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is actually yeah. excellent, though. This is so good that they're entombing here, because we, they cannot stop us from surgicaling now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it. Uh, and just pay the mana for it, because we're probably going to add Nas, so uh, just pay the mana for surgical extraction. Underground C, yeah. When I first actually started playing Magic Online, I actually didn't click on the thing. I didn't realize we had to. Apparently that's... Oh, they have an, uh, an another entomb. Do they only have three Grissom Rats? I guess so. So oh, what can they get with entomb? They can get Sarah's Emissary, and they can get Grief, and they can get Ashing Wider, and then what's what's Villis? What does that card do? Broker of Brood. It's like a pseudo Grissom Brand. Oh, okay. They're going to take Infernal Tutor. I guess they could take Chain of Vapor and just put Sarah in play. I feel like they kind of have to take Vapor here, but I could be wrong. Yeah. I guess all their other threats are soft to Chain, right? Mm -hmm. Grizzlebrand's like the only creature that gets like immediate effect that beats Chain. Yeah. So let's just draw an LED here. Just just draw the LED, Newton. That's all you got to do. <laughs> That would be no good. pressure. Then we could just have <laughs> no. the flames, though, right? Uh, you'd have to add Nas because we don't. We only have one ritual, but. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. Do we fetch here to thin or no? Probably not, right? Because we have cantrips. Correct. We have brainstorm in our deck still, which is there's preordain. Okay. Uh... Preordain four, five, six. Preordain doesn't. Ooh, veil. Interesting. So I'm just thinking really quick. The problem is, is they're going to get. What are they going to put in play most likely? Not Iona, right? They're going to they entomb. Because it's in a hand. Right. So they're going to entomb for Sarah's emissary, or what's the how how much how mana intensive is that other card? How much mana does it cost the, to draw cards? The Villas. Yeah. That's like eight mana. I think most likely they're going to get Sarah's emissary and name sorcery. Okay. So let's draw the veil. Draw the veil? Yeah, and then play the pedal. I think, I'm thinking, hold on. Let me think one you, second. You, I'm assuming we're in a bottom of the ritual, though. No, I, I'm, hmm, this is so hard. Like we, we have to get a bounce spell at some point, right? Or a discard spell? Yeah, okay, I, you can I bottom the dark ritual. That's fine. Bottom, bottom, right? Yeah, that's fine. Because if we draw LED, it's just such a high rule, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, just pass. You don't even need to play the land. I didn't see Annex in their deck. I, maybe it's there. I didn't see it. Uh, I didn't see Annex either. Shade 920. I, I saw Emissary, which seems better, but... Yeah. But Emissary doesn't notably doesn't stop us from doing our thing, right? It just stops us if we don't do something after that. Correct. I don't know. Annex is really good against us, so I'm not sure. Although, I guess maybe it's more for the Force of Wax. Like... Sorry, my dog's uh, going crazy. His mom is home. Just doing laps around the house. <laughs> I was also trying to do the math to if Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual could cast Tendrils and then do something, but it doesn't. And so that that's another problem. I'm, with, I'm like, just, just trying to think the route to victory here, right? If they get Emissary, do, I don't... It's Ad Nauseam. Like, do, do we have another... I guess we do have Dress Down. So yeah. Gonna... And we also have Past in Flames for Chain of Vapor. It's really not hard to beat it. That's that, true. That card's not... That card is only annoying to... Yeah, that card's only annoying like if we're have all combo in our hand and no engine. If we have an engine, it's pretty it's pretty easy to beat. Sarah's emissary, that's fine. So they drew Lotus Petal. So their hand is gonna be Animate Dead Iona at the end of this. So Animate Dead Iona is the only cards left in there that we don't know. 
Now I do think that we thin fetch to thin just because we have another fetch land if we need it and we can put back tendrils from... I, I um, don't think we want to thin here because we know the two bottom cards, right? Oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We did preordain. That's totally fair. Okay. Nice, nice, nice idea. <laughs> there you go. Let's, let's, let's win the game real quick. Okay, so we can actually put back land tendrils, play land, and we can... Head step so I'm just down. thinking really quick. So I think we just pass the turn, and we plan to dress down from 12, or from 10. Or I mean, not dress down. Uh, yeah, that's okay. We just dress down, and we win the game the next turn, yeah, is the plan. That brainstorm was insane. That was really good. I always joke, but I know uh, my chat here is going to think I'm just extremely greedy, obviously, but I always joke they should print Brainstorm in green. Okay, wait, wait, and, and step, make sure we do that. They should do Brainstorm for what? They, oh, I was saying, I was jokingly saying uh, they should print Brainstorm in green. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, take the bulk here. Or no? Yeah, we should take the Valk just because uh, we want access to red that's, like, permanent, and the other one doesn't really matter. Just get, like, green, black, maybe. Just buy is fine. Sure. And then we can just dress oh, down. Okay, I almost passed the turn. <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been a, a classic uh, where Mario would feel your pain there. Yeah. Let's just draw Ritual or LED and just make this a piff, clean piff kill. Ritual. Okay, oh, there we go. Passive Flame is good, too. Yeah, we just have to do some math. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we can actually Infernal Tutor for Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Past in Flames. I think that's enough. Let me just think really quick. It's all so if we infer <laughs> It's not because we don't have blue mana. Oh, Dress Down's in place, so we're actually okay. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that's lethal. Yep, right, it's should, lethal. Should we leave with C's here? It, uh, we have to cast it anyway, so you no 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 you don't, because you need the red for uh you need the red for past in flames and you oh, need sure, the infernal sure. tutor first. Yeah yeah you can't. So it, it doesn't matter how we tap right. Uh no, but you need black open. So but we have petals, so it doesn't actually matter. So infernal tutor for cabal ritual. Cast both cabal rituals, then cast thought sees. Or pass in flames first. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just thought season. Take animate. There we go. Cabal ritual, past in flames, and then just cabal ritual, cabal ritual, tutor tendrils. Makes sense. Makes sense. GG. This is the easy part. Uh... It doesn't matter what they named Bramario. We have a dress down in play. I think we should surgical them just because. Just for funsies. <laughs> yeah, take ten. There you go. Get to target them. Uh, no, no. All right. <laughs> That's only game two, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost game Unfor one to, uh, <laughs> Unfor Unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate this will all be thwarted by them killing us on turn one here. This is, a, is this a hard matchup for you? I would assume it, so. It depends. If you're on the play and you steal game one, like, just, they if they have, like, a, a Faithless Looting one. hand, like, uh -huh. Faithless Looting, yeah, so, like, if, if you're on the play, it's actually probably fine because between Flusters, Veil, and Discard and Surgical, game three you can generally do something but our only interaction is surgical on turn one so if they keep a turn one hand we just can't win yeah i uh was having this conversation actually uh i feel like we keep it right because of the seas so we have seas and veil so if they go turn one faithless looting like we still have a way to interact mm -hmm. if they just kill us on turn one then uh -huh. we obviously and we also can play out leds playing out leds like i said is really good Mm -hmm. They're at four. Please don't kill us on turn one. Please. It looks like that's what they're going for. Uh, I will say historically, like, Reanimator has been the bane of elves, and that has completely flipped now because of endurance. It's kind of insane. Romaro, the problem with E Truth is 
Most of the time they animate Grizzlebrand and a bounce spell is not enough. You have to have a fast kill plus like the bounce spell is there to beat Emissary. You don't want to dilute your deck too much. So I'm just trying to think here. So this is so close because you can actually potentially brainstorm into a kill. But I, I think we, we just... safe, right? Because they move to four and we have a seize. Well, yeah. So we seize them and then we also have Veil, right? So we can yeah, just we play Petal and hold on Veil. Yeah. Yeah, I think E-Truth, the problem is, is you just don't have the slots for it. Just get a uh, Underground's fine. Nice. Uh, just take the Collector Brutality, because that, that's their discard outlet in this hand. That makes sense, yeah. Um, yeah. That hand's really bad. Play out the pedal in case they draw a Thought Seize. Right. Yeah, BS is super tempting, but to Romario's point, they mulligan, or not Romario, uh, to Newton's point, they mulligan super hard, and we have access to Veil. So I, I think that there's, it's definitely right not to do that. Let's just brainstorm into a tutor here real quick. Oh, just draw it. Okay. Just, uh, <laughs> We're just, just too good, right? Yeah, just just play the fetch land and just add Nas. It's just a super safe, just uh, crack okay. the fetch. I, I, I'm gonna, I don't want to screw this up. I have the retain power. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so first, fetch the land. Uh, we just add Nas here because it's like so... We're at 16, but we are we have mana floating. So uh, there's no reason to cast anything else. So just hold prior, hold priority, control, hold control. Right? I forget. Yep, hold control. And cast the Infernal Tutor. I have screwed then, this up before when playing with and just, Mario. And just crack black, black. Because we're going to float at least one black. Oh, he conceded. <laughs> he didn't want to play anymore. Wait, see, this is an easy matchup. I don't know what I was saying, dude. It's an easy matchup. I could Veil Br Brutality, Ramar. You're right. You can Veil Brutality, but it's a discard outlet for them, right? Regardless, and we don't want them... Like, why would we let them have a discard outlet? They have a bunch of reanimate spells in their deck. All right, we're on the... Uh, we're ahead of ourselves, right? Like, two to one here. I mean... You're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I love that meme, by the way, from, uh, shoot, I forgot what movie it's from. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I, the sports shows, I, I, the sports, sorry, the sports uh, radio uh, podcast I listen to will reference it all the time. Yeah, but I think no matter what, Dumb and Dumber, there you go. Ramari, I think no matter what, like, if we find Tudor the next turn, we're winning the game. And we have Veil, vale. if they draw, like, what if they draw Thoughtseize, and then they Thoughtseize? I, I don't know, I, I just feel like there's no way that, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong. It's it's possible. You're, you're pretty smart, Romario, so maybe you're just right. I think, okay, let's, let's, see, let's see what is objectively the better uh, line here. If we take, we're we're afraid of them. I guess we're what we're afraid of is them using uh, collective brutality as a discard spell. But they're still down a card, um, and notably we would draw one with. I think it's fine. Uh, well, I guess in the other scenario, if they top deck a like in tomb, then it's kind of bad for you, right? Yeah. Well, so. If they top deck in tomb, but if they top deck any fatty, like mm -hmm. it's a it's a discard outlet and a discard spell. So even though we have veil, uh -huh. we have we have to use veil where we don't have to use veil if they just draw in tomb, mm -hmm. and then we can use veil the following turn against Grizzlebrand to just stop from dying. Mm -hmm. You know, like if we don't have to use veil that turn, that's better. You don't have to. But if you don't do that, then I just don't think you play the land, Jaihim, because I think that you either don't play the land at all and then just cast it off of because you have a land drop. There is a world in which you hit all of your fetchable lands. It's unlikely, but because there's a chance that you hit all of your fetchable lands, you either don't play the land um, and just do it off of the Lotus Petal or you fetch the land. I, I don't know that the one life I'm not sure which one's more likely to happen. I think they're both pretty unlikely. Oh, yeah, yeah, you just don't play the land. Yeah. Romario, but I'm going to have to uh, take a picture of my beautiful ant deck 
on top of that play mat and then have Newton show it. Sorry, I'm responding to some messages I just realized I had. Yeah, Romario, basically the playing a land is is dependent on like color sources, right? Like if you're ad nauseum and you have no mana floating, there's an argument for fetching because you want to keep Lotus Petal because you don't know what color mana you'll need. Mm -hmm. So like that's kind of an argument. Ooh, this hand's excellent. Look at it. Let's just keep doing this. <laughs> Was he on a control deck? I think he's normally he's on some control. On, uh, like just guy, like Stoneblade, usually. Yeah, I I like these hands. You should just keep doing this type situation. I think we lead with C's. We do definitely do not lead with C's. Okay. So when you only have one C's in Ant, when you only have one C's against a Cantrip deck, you just generally don't blow it because if you blow it and they have like a brainstorm in their hand, you're just too high risk to. Gotcha. Die to a. I a guess force it depends on the deck, right? If you're playing the combo mirror, then you leave with C's. But if you're playing against like a slow fair deck, then you probably save it for the combo turn. Yeah, exactly. Unless, Unless if I had double C's man, here, yeah. yeah. Or if I had double C's here, then maybe you can. Ooh. This is actually super interesting because we actually can get pretty close to a natural tender. Let's just play the Pluto Delta and pass. We don't have to do anything yet. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Ooh, that's a that's a fantastic card. Yeah, just cast brainstorm here. This is great. LED. Um, so put back tendrils island and then just fetch. Or Tendrils, mm, Infernal Tutor might be better. Tendrils, Infernal Tutor, that's fine. And then Fetch and Preordain here. They're basic island, or basic planes, and so that means that they probably have a Nars set. We don't need green game one, so just get another Underground C, get an Underground C. They, um, they sometimes, you said you get play Preordain, right? Yeah, because they have Narset in their deck, right? So let's just bottom these. We don't need either of those. We might get back to basics here. They, they you think so? Game play. one? They tend to play it. Oh, interesting. If we get back to basics, I'm going to be sad. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's all right. We have, we have Island and Ponder here, so that's okay. This actually might be okay. Perfect. So just Island and Ponder. You called it, dude. All right, so this is actually great. We have a black source. We have access to Wishclaw Talisman, and we have Ponder. So let me think. We, we want to take Ponder for... We want to draw Ponder, and then Polluted... Oh. This is... Hold on. So Ponder, then Polluted Delta, then Wishclaw Talisman. Yeah, that's right. There you go. So, yeah. So next turn, the reason we do that is next turn, if they counterspell our Ponder for some reason, or I guess they could play Narset here, um, we have the Black Source to cast both Thoughtseize and cast the rest of what we want to do. So notably here, we can just play out the Misty. Yeah, what did he find, Jace? That's fine. I didn't feed Lou yet. So, okay, so we can... Let's ponder first. I know we're not drawing a card, but let's just ponder here. Okay, so Thoughtseize. I'm trying to think if Thoughtseize is better than Thoughtseize. And if we Thoughtseize here, we have... 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 7... I think we just want to draw Thoughtseize, but we're not going to draw it this turn. We're going to draw it next 
next turn, right? So just put Talisman, Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, and then just play the um, Polluted Delta. And Path. Yeah. And so now we can decide whether we want that Thoughtseize based on what they do. Mm-hmm. So, like, if they Jace here or tap out for something, there's a good chance we... Um, they don't have, like, more than two free... They need more than two free counter spells here, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just draw the thought seize. Okay, cool. So uh, we can just fetch Swamp and thought seize first. And if they force a will one of these or force a negation, we might be able to just natural tendrils them. Mm-hmm. Force of will, force of will, true name. So just take force, yeah. So um, they have one more force. I'm trying to think if we have a way. So we don't have a way to... If This is so complicated. Okay, so we can, these are the two lines I'm thinking of, right? So the two lines you're thinking of is you can either lead on Dark Ritual, and if they don't force it, then you can Thought Seize them. But if you do that, you have a clean Piff Kill. If you don't do that, then we can add Nauseam. So do you want to lead on Dark Ritual? Okay. Yeah, I think so. This is This gets punished if they Force of Will it. So with this line, I probably would have played out Lotus Petal because it makes it, yeah. So Lotus Petal makes us makes it look less like we're in trouble to this. Um, we just okay, have so to pass I, I, now. I, I, okay, so so that was the thing, right? I, I guess their um... their thought is you have no more black mana and they have a back to basics. If you play out Lotus Petal, they're less likely to force it mm-hmm. um, because you played out another black source. So this is the higher like. If this resolved, it's the higher upside because we don't have to add nauseum from 13. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. We can just do this again next turn. It's fine. Just pass. It fits for me, I'm sure. But do you see what I'm saying? So if you play out Lotus Petal, they're less likely to, to force the Dark Ritual because you have another Black Source. And they don't realize that we're constrained on that. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, they could technically still do it, but... I, I yeah, they saying. still they still could do it. You could also add nos from thirteen, but add nos from thirteen is like a little rough. So, so here, this I mean, is really t- kind of a bad top deck, there, right? It's a very bad top deck. Um, so, how many forces are gone? Two forces. How many do we think they play? For the full set. Full. Well, but did they play any negation? No, I don't think so. Okay, then just Infernal Tutor for another Cabal Ritual. Man, you would have played around back to basics too. We'd have a. <laughs> <would've been> a... <laughs> it's okay. It's I did... only because I'm familiar with this player. Um, they go to my LGS, yeah. and then I've like paired it to them a few times on uh, on Moto. Like they, it's a free win for them, I guess. Is why they don't do it. Yeah. Doesn't have to be pretty, but. Are they gonna play out a uh, what's it called the Shark Typhoon? Oh no, Snapcaster. Uh, this is spell hold in uh, Orange County. Shade 920. Okay, so I think next turn we go for it no matter what, right? Unless we draw technically an uncastable spell. Mm-hmm. But hopefully we just draw a land. That's perfect. All right, uh, just play. L- no, just lead on Thoughtseize. You don't want them to force away your Lotus Petal. That would be very weird. But they could do it. So they have to have two Force of Wills here. Otherwise, and, we just and win. And two pinches. 
And two pitches. Yeah, well, actually, just one pitch, I guess. Well, they could, they could have forced a negation plus force of will, right? Right, right, right. Ooh, that's kind of gross. Uh, yeah. I mean, they have to have force of will still here. So, uh, let's let's jam. They have a, a threat in play. I, I think we're just jamming here. Plus, they have a Jace. I don't think there's any world in which we're not jamming. Yeah, but if you leave with pedal and they force the pedal, that's what are you thinking, uh, Arkan? Like my thought is, so we can just piff here. Uh, game one, there's no uh, so hold priority and just track for red. Actually, we can just tendrils them. It doesn't matter. They died. Okay. So Arkan, if they force we, so that that is an argument. That's a line, but we're actually mana constrained. I guess with LED, we're not mana constrained. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, against this, we actually don't want all three carpets because they can kind of play around carpet and they play prismatic ending. So I board in two carpet of flowers against them. Mm -hmm. I board in one the Besaju, the abrupt decays. That makes sense because and they're they probably have permanent base H. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all. That's all I board. So you can take one Cabal Ritual out in this matchup. Ave is really good against them. Uh, you can board out preordains, and you can board out one lotus petal, and I'm good with that. that. That all makes sense, actually. Like we want to trim on the the mana that's not as good or stable, and then yeah, it's, it's a longer game, anyways. Um, exactly. And then we don't we're upgrading essentially our preordain preordains, which are like high floor to higher ceiling cards. Right. Yeah. So Romario, they probably do. But the thing is, is if you Ave on, like, turn two... Okay, wait, this is really important, though. I guess we're going to keep this because it's not worth uh, going down another card and put back Cabal Ritual. We actually don't need Cabal Ritual in this hand. So this is where we definitely do not lead on Carpet because they have Prismatic Ending in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, so... They have Pierce that we just saw right now. Right. Oh, I thought we bottomed that. Okay, yeah, we can cast one Thought Seize because we have a second Thought Seize, so that's okay. We, we did bottom it. Okay, cool. Pierce, that's fine. I probably wouldn't keep endings in if it were me, but that's me. I just assume my opponent knows what they're doing. They usually keep a couple in against us. It's really weird, but like my experience is they keep a couple normally. I, I don't know if they don't have enough things to cut or what. Um, we definitely, I think we just passed the turn here. Do you even play so, the same or no? No. Uh, the reason you don't is because you don't have blue mana either to cantrip, so we're casting carpet to cantrip anyway. Uh -huh. So, we yeah, we just don't need to play the Visager yet. Yeah, also, it hits Wishclaw, right? If we're just playing Wishclaw. Mm. Stoneforge. This is, like, the weird one where if your hand's really slow, like, it feels bad, but you can Thought Seize Caldera, but most of the time it's not correct. This is interesting. We could decay the Mystic. Yeah, that's really interesting because... So, if we decay the Mystic, though, we lose really, really hard to back to basics. Um... We also could play out Carpet and then Decay the Mystic, which makes them have... Yeah, yeah, which makes them have both uh, Back to Basics and a Force of Will for this. Cool. So go to second main and then make a black. That's fine. And now they have to have both back to basics and the removal spell for carpet, which mm -hmm. unlikely. Yeah, here's the ending. See. That's great. Yeah, that's crazy that they keep an ending now. Yeah, I th just play the land to pass. We don't want to fetch, obviously, because we might want a basic island. But yeah, we're still basically one, like just one tutor away from. I mean, we just need any cantrip or uh, or infernal tutor, right? And it's go time. Exactly. Yeah, just pass again. 
they have five cards, so like it's getting to the range where they're gonna have two pieces of interaction, which is kind of annoying, but. Mm -hmm. Well, we know one of, well, if they brainstorm the color, presumably away. Yeah. Chase, that's kind of gross. <laughs> All right, let's draw something. There we go. Okay. Yeah, something. Um, so I'm looking, we're not, we don't, we can't get threshold, but it doesn't matter because we have wish claw, right? Right. So, or we have two LEDs rather. So I think we just lead off of seize, right? thought seize. And if they pierce it or fluster it, we can just dark ritual in response. Yeah. Yeah. They have double force. It's pretty bad. So we take one, right? Yeah. So I'm actually kind of inclined to play a dark it's like this is really close like the dark ritual is kind of disposable but so is the cabal ritual um i think i play the cabal ritual here to see if they'll force it just get a basic do we want a basic no at this point we probably don't right like we're screwed anyways mm -hmm. right? yeah we need a blue mana anyway yeah just take underground see um cast cabal ritual to just see if they'll bite you need black and then if they don't, we just play Wish Claw. And if they let it resolve and hope to counter something else, then we can kill them here. They're probably going to force it, though. That's okay. Okay. So they have what? Jace plus... They pitch Snapcaster. Jace. Here. Jace Snapcaster, yeah. You got punked by Counterbalance in <laughs> blue-red. And one of the nice things about, uh, I, I'm sure you've been following, but obviously the strange uh, card in L's right now is uh, Shriek Maw. Notably gets around Counterbalance pretty neatly. Yeah, because it's like five mana or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. It's, it's really funny, right? Like, most people's, like, randomly good against Blue Red. Yeah. This is kind of garbage time post board. Like, they have enough counter spells that it's it's unlikely we win this but it's like if we draw exactly tutor next turn it's i don't think like, so only because they're down two force of wills already right like and we have to obviously top deck what, exactly what we need now yeah i i just mean because they pondered and jaced they didn't shuffle off ponder and then they also jaced and That's they have true. a snap caster brainstorm right like they just have so much yeah we're, we're under tremendous pressure now yeah. Yeah, if I if if we don't draw a tutor next turn, I I'm pretty likely just to say go to the game three just to save the traumatic uh, experience. Yeah. Right, right. You want to save me and the the viewership, right? Exactly. Very smart marketing there. Mm. Nice, nice sort of feast and famine. I I'm not sure that's right to have in against us because if, if you're because play I think it's good because uh it makes us discard a spell and leaves their mana untapped right but if you're playing that uh discard dark ritual you can flash it back if you're if you're playing that against us though what does that mean about the state of the game like it's basically <laughs> over at that point oh this is really interesting we actually have a small chance here i will take one more turn because if we draw a fetch land we can actually make a bunch of aves and and try and do something that's pretty funny actually Uh, it's absolutely good against us, Sea Watch. It is absolutely good against us. I mean, Countermouse has been the bane of combo decks since forever. Yeah. Oh, we do discard in our card, but we discard uh, LED, I guess. I guess we want, and I guess we can't cantrip. No, discard. Yeah, it's uh, it's got the LED. Question Do we leave with LED or Ritual? on the next turn here. If we draw a land, you lead with Ritual. Because if Ritual resolves, then there's no more decisions to be made, whereas if you lead with LED, it's like you have less cards in your hand, so 
Yeah, that's Ooh. bad. I just concede here. Yeah, it's it's over. If we do it before that, they don't know how we sideboarded exactly. Yeah, it's okay. I think uh, we're not gonna. They play saw everything the anymore after because, like I said, this is uh, just for the stream, I guess. Right? I guess in the future, if I pair him as my LGS, then maybe. But he is currently banned, actually. But I think this is fine. I think we're okay still. I I don't know, see watch like. It, it hitting a cantrip or like anything is it, when they have so much tempo already in that matchup like if it acts as a counter spell it's already really good and if it counters two things it's insane right i i don't know i mean obviously the variants can go either ways but like i have a screen go ahead oh go ahead i was gonna say i have a screenshot of of a counterbalance where I had three dark rituals that all got countered into like ritual, ritual, LED, Ave for like eight. So like obviously sometimes you just viral it. This hand's really close, but I think we keep it because we're we're basically like a tutor away from killing them, and we don't care much about what they're doing. Um, but it is definitely close. What's your thought? What do you think here? Um, I think because of well, there's no cantrips though, but we have protection plus removal. I would lean keep, but what do you think? Yeah, I think I I think I would keep it. We have time in this matchup, and cantrips are good, and uh, cantrips are good, and tutors are good. Uh, you, there's you, we say the duress, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Ooh, okay. So, we actually just pass again. Interesting. Yeah, we just pass again. I guess we don't want to get the Wish Claw. We need mana. Yeah, we need, we, need one, we need at least one more mana, and we don't want the Wish Claw pending. And we're not discarding. If we were discarding, that's where I would make a different assessment. <laughs> Who needs choke? Play a stone forge mystic, please. It looks like it's gonna be. Oh no! Okay, so I'm thinking. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. I feel like we can actually know we're off because Talon's three. Yeah, so we're not off if Duress takes their only interaction, but we are off if we need to. I'm thinking. So two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five. We have exactly enough if Duress is enough. So we can we can cast duress here, but if they fluster it, we're in some just get a basic swamp. Yeah. Um, so we have to just pass. Yeah, we have to pass. Correct. If they counter this, we have to just pass. Because we can't dark ritual pay. Ooh. Do wait. Did they shuffle? Hold on. What did they do? They did shuffle. They did shuffle. So they basically have to find brainstorm. What 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 do you want to do? You want to spin? Um. They so we can get... Ave. Notably, we can Ave here, right? So we can go Dark Ritual, Wish Claw Talisman, mm -hmm. right? And if it and if they don't counter that, then we get to Ave, right? Because we have three, six, seven, eight, six, five. Yeah. So they have to hit they exactly. Back to basics here. I think we might. Mm, or still take a brainstorm. I think we just take a brainstorm. Because the rest of the cards don't matter. So. Do we pedal so, here or no? Yeah, well, so... Because I don't think we want to leave the... If they stop yeah, us, I don't... If I they don't force want... it, we definitely... Yeah, just pedal here. You know what I mean? I, I think we want to get basic... Uh, we want to keep green, actually, is the reason for Abrupt Decay for Back to Basics. Is the reason that we don't want to fetch. 
So play claw and cross your fingers. I think they have to brainstorm in the For first. For 100% have to. Yeah. They never have it, right, Newton? They never have it. They never just have say it. it. Just say it. Just say it. Oh, we should have played out Lotus Petal. Oh, if for some God. reason they're sur they surgical extract our Lotus Petals here, awesome. All right, play Lotus Petal first, just in case they have surgical. LED and Ave. Okay. Actually, we can just tendrils them. No, we can't. Uh, so crack LED for green. Don't do not do not activate it. Actually, hold on. We have one, two, three. We have exactly six. enough. We can tendrils. So crack. Actually, we're short. For we're 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 one t uh, storm short, but they don't have four mana, so they can't even wrath us. So they're a hundred percent dead. So crack LED for no 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 crack LED for green right now. Oh man, Woo. yeah. All right, we're good. Okay. You had priority. No, I, I held priority. I was I yeah, thought yeah. for a second you wanted me to stop and. Uh... No no you're good. I didn't know you held priority. Okay. I normally just with wish claw you can just crack LED first because it's already in play. So I don't normally hold priority when I wish claw. You're good. It doesn't matter. Just get up. I land, yeah. All right, yeah. He has, I, I guarantee he has zero outs against this. Unless he, <laughs> unless he uh, does something weird. That's echoing true, I guess. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we did the thing. I, we did do the thing. We are notably three and one. Uh, obviously, uh, Mike's back might be hurting right now, but he's carrying the team, right? But <laughs> can, can we blame can we blame that that shuffled ponder for the reason we're not 4-0? If we can blame that, then <laughs> the shuffled pond. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Where we accidentally had the miscommunication. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. But to be fair, um, there's not. It's not guaranteed we get there too. It, but it did slow us down. Yeah, it, no, it's definitely not guaranteed, but if we're playing in Magical Christmas Land, we can pretend that that's why. Right, this is the the Pity 5 right? right? The, uh, the exactly. <laughs> exactly. The get oops in the last round 5 right? right? So, Mike, how many leagues did you um, want to do, by the way? I wasn't sure what your schedule was. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm good as long as you want to go. I Whatever you're thinking. Okay, I guess we'll play by ear. Um, this is notably will be the the fifth match of the first league, and the whole. Go ahead. Yeah, the whole point, Siwaj, in in playing Ave is that you don't have to add Nas there. That is the entire. That's the entire point, right? Like they have no outs. If they had four mana already and they could wrath us, then I, there's an argument for add Nas. Wait, who's this guy? Oh, he was in our. He was in your stream. He was. Um, this is pretty funny. He's um, a good modern player, a great modern player. That's picking up elves. Ooh. So should we just get him? Should we just get him real quick with the with the ad nods here? You just want to get him with it, right? It? Yeah, yeah. Just get it and duress him, right? Take <laughs> the take the green sun zenith and just draw uh, any mana source, any dark ritual or lotus petal, and let's ad nods him. Show him, the, show him the power of Dark Ritual versus the Elves, Newton. So I... Yeah, Soul Strong is one of the best modern players uh, by reputation, and I'm very happy that he's been picking up Elves lately. Um, just picked it up actually just yesterday. But, but watching some of my streams and... Uh, actually picked up my Patreon content, too. Yeah, but uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so we get the dress here and take like a green sun zenith or whatever. You you actually can pick what we take because you're probably way better at that choice than me. But if we draw a lotus petal or dark ritual or cabal ritual, we can do it on turn two. Mm -hmm. But worst case, we have a turn three ad nauseum here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, this matchup, we've kind of talked about it uh, before where I think it's... Pretty close to even. If you wanted to say Ant was maybe slightly favored, I wouldn't argue it too much. There's so many matchups, though, where if you don't know how to deal with the texture of the game, 
Oh, that's okay. Cool. If you don't know how, like, the texture of the game's going, you can easily lose, right? Like, mm -hmm. the problem with elves is you have to be able to beat their fast draws. So you have to know, like, hey, when is their hand faster than yours, and when do you need to do something to prevent that? Oh, uh -huh. he gave us free information. Um, and then also, when do... Like, when, so when do you have to play defensively, and when do you just have to go for it? So we actually can just ponder here, and again, Dark Ritual is still just an ad nauseum. So LED brainstorm. So brainstorm. Hold on one second. Brainstorm. Brainstorm is. So we can actually do something cool here to get some extra floating mana. Let me think. So if we put brainstorm, if we put back Adnaz. So notably we're... next turn we can. Still not. Crack get lines at diamond. We don't need it though, because uh, we. So just okay. So just uh, draw a brainstorm. And the other two don't matter. So he cannot cast Oof next turn, right? Unless he draws exactly. Oof. Are we playing the island here or the. Just play the Vault. Yeah, just just pass the turn. He we have like an extremely. He could actually top deck a green. He would have to draw exactly Oof, though, right? Green Sense Hand doesn't do it, right? Oh, he has Burst Lord Ranger. He has Burst Lord Ranger. Yeah. But he has one draw. So he he's on like a five out here, right? Because the collector who plus the, uh, the if he has the green suns in it, that's does lock us out of the LED mana and lotus yeah. mana, right? But with the brainstorm brainstorm, we can actually get the threshold pretty easily here. So it's actually not like we still have an out if he if he drew exactly that. Mm -hmm. I think he did it to us. I think you jinxed us. So no, you didn't. We're good. Uh, highly possible, highly possible. Okay, take our one. We Okay, so Brainstorm ends step here because we just want to get closer to Threshold. Mm -hmm. And then, so put back C's, Brainstorm, draw Brainstorm. Put back C's and... Okay. Yeah, brainstorm and then draw brainstorm. Okay, so I'm just trying to think. So four cards, fetch lands, five cards, lotus petals, six cards, brain cord. So brainstorm is free here. So we can fetch brainstorm because brainstorm turns on. Um, we know our next threshold. Card is, um, C, so we want to fetch first, right? Yeah. So this is five brainstorm, six lotus petals, seven. So brainstorm's actually plus one mana here. At worst. That's fine. So just put back land, land, because we're going to add nauseum here. So those are just free draws. Mm -hmm. So pedal first to get threshold. Uh, crack it for or crack it for black, and then leave up the underground C. And then I'm thinking, but I don't think we actually crack uh, lion's eye diamond here because we have a mana open. Open that other window. I will need to get used to this. There you go. There's the Dark Ritual Duress. We just need a tutor for a kill. Tutor. There, there you go. go. All right. Uh, they only have one card, so they can't have... I guess they... Could they have drawn... We know their hand, right? It's Wooded Foothills? Yes. Yeah, so we, just we Ritual, Ritual, them. Ritual, Tutor Tendrils. Yeah. Uh, ritual. And then LE, Ritual, LED, and then... I think duress, and then we should have that. Should just be natural storm. Okay, they're conceding. They they know what's up. I think you didn't target them. Oh, I, okay, that's what it was. Yeah. LED hold priority and then tendrils. These are like the weird situations where I always crack LED for red because I'm just. Paranoid that I missed uh, that I missed uh, tendrils in my graveyard, and it's not in my deck. <laughs> oh, he's conceding now. Yeah. Part of me wants him to win only because then. Yeah, I was gonna say, play. how's it feel? <laughs> he definitely doesn't hold doesn't hold priority on that just because he's like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna throw. All right, dress downs are good. Now that you have Shepard and Once Upon a Time, I don't. Uh, 
I don't board in Flusterstorms. Flusterstorm used to be something that you boarded in against elves, but I don't bring them in anymore since you have Once Upon a Time and uh, Shepherd. I board in the Abrupt Decay because I don't care about fetching non-basics against you um, for Oof. And uh, and yeah, then I... Them. No, I don't bring in Massacre. Um, the and chain. then you bring in Chain too, but you don't bring in Echoing Truth because it's just too mana intensive. And then right. you can just take out one Cabal Ritual. Abe is not... I don't... I board out Abe against you. Do you think that that's wrong? Um... It... There... Well, I think it really depends. I think it's probably worse against the Nettle version. Uh, against the... Recl because they can just, like, draw up the whole deck and where the damage will be lethal. Uh, against... The Reclaimer version, uh... There is, like, some merits, but I don't think it's great. I think you just want to clean kill. If you draw it, it's kind of bad, too. Yeah, so it board that out, board out one Cabal Ritual, uh, board out, you can board out um, Swamp in that matchup again. Uh, we board out Veil, because it's only good on, like, turn one, right. and then you can board out, like, a Preordain, and that's probably fine. You could also board out a Duress, but, like, you have traps now, so I, I don't necessarily like cutting. Yeah, I would say, um... The average elf player, regardless of the build, will likely have traps now. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And notably, Veil does not stop trap. Exactly. This hand's so close. If we draw, we can. So we have decay. We're definitely keeping this hand. Um. And also worth noting, like this is like an, an interesting hand where you can actually play around trap a little bit mm -hmm. by like playing out your artifacts and then. Ritual Adnaz is like your only two spells that you cast in a turn. Seems okay then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna keep it. This is also though where you could aim for like five on turn one if yeah, you didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. have. Which is like if we for it, it but... for, uh, for the other version. For yeah. The, for the the reclaimer version. Excuse me as I eat right now. <laughs> I think I lost. He has no land. <laughs> Did he miss on land on Once Upon a Time? Did he miss on a land? Is it, that's it, like it does super happen low. every once in a while. Um, what, what, what's the percent though? Of missing on a land? Yeah, is it real low? It's um, about 20%. Oh, okay. So most of the time okay. you play the percentages. Well, he's got the oof though. He's got the oof. So there's he has a chance. Do you think he just baited us though and he's got trap? What do you think what do you think he's doing over there? Alright, um... so play Basaju, play Petal, play LED, and pass the turn. So that we can duress, right? No, the reason is is so if we draw a land we can dark ritual ad nauseum without turning on Trap. Um, mind break trap. Makes sense. Don't draw land, all right? So or I, a mind break I, trap. I get this question all the time, and um, ooh, they could oof us here, but I don't think it matters. Well, I guess it does. We. How do they oof us? If they have endurance. Oh yeah. The, there's there's a secret mode of endurance where you can use mm -hmm. it as a lotus petal. Yeah, I've used that in my uh in my uh opposition deck. Are you the inventor of that deck, by the way? Uh, no, one of my buddies is, but I mean, it's it's mostly a meme, right? If I'm being honest, but mm -hmm. okay, reclaimer, that's fine. So he drew forest, so it's like he either had trap or he didn't. Mm -hmm. But now he has oof, so we basically need to draw oofotsties. Uh, mm. Interesting. So what's the worst timeline? He draws. He takes Dark Ritual, I think is the worst for us. Yeah, because we don't we're constrained on mana. Could it's we actually turned up there, Noah. We have one, two, no. five, mm -mm. we're still If Adnos was in our deck we could have. But because Adnos is in our hand we could not. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, Legacy Council, we need more uh, 
Dark Ritual. We need nor mana. Yeah, I Dark Ritual. I think is the take here. We'll see if he takes it. I think Dark Ritual is the take because I think that us drawing taking ad nauseum to your point, we can go get uh, Piff mm. if we draw another Dark Ritual or another Cabal Ritual or something. If he takes, so if we draw an LED, we can two, four, so we can, if we draw LED, we can go Infernal Tutor for Past in Flames. Past in Flames is four. We have two left. Dark Ritual is four floating. Infernal Tutor is two floating. LED is five floating. We can actually add Nauseam. So yeah, if if he takes Dark Ritual and we draw exactly LED, we can... We can uh, add nauseum with past in flames. Right from the yard. Yeah, that makes sense. Notably, uh, past in flames a lot worse now, or a lot scarier to go for against elves. So if you're an ant player, um, I think you would agree, right? Like you try to avoid the. Oh, player. for sure. Yeah, you try and avoid it, but we do know that he has oof as one of his three cards because he revealed it. So we have and to like. Off. Regardless. Yeah, exactly. Like we're not we're not passing if we draw LED because if we draw LED, we basically have to what use our lotus petal to abrupt decay it, and it I, it just feels like that's not a winning line. Exactly. Like as a combo player, you're you're gonna have to accept. Sometimes you're gonna have egg on your face, right? Like exactly. And I think that some people don't do that enough. Like sometimes when you look at things, you're like, and that's why I think Doomsday is such an interesting deck. But also, I don't play it that often because it's like. You basically have to assess the situation and say, I'm okay losing to these things, and I'm not okay losing to these. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the harder parts of Magic, right? It's like, I think one of the most challenging things of playing a combo deck is determining what am I willing to lose to, and what are the odds of losing to that thing. No, for sure. Like, even with, like, Elves, which is, like, a more... Especially the version I play, it's, it's a little bit more range, uh, mid-rangey, where it can play the long game, but at some point... Like, let's just say your hand is just natural order land and they've got like a Jace on board or whatever. Like, you're going to have to slam it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, if, exactly. If they have it, they have it. Like, yep. And I think that, not even just an ant, but I think that is a thing a lot of combo players, like, are a little bit too gun shy. Like, I always joke on stream that, uh, it's like you said earlier, like, oh, they don't have it, right? And then every once in a while they do. But exactly. usually they don't. Well, and, and, and obviously, mostly it's a meme for you got you to think positive when you're going for it, right? But, like, at the end of the day, I think that I think that the, the type of deck you play, it's so important that you understand how cards interact with the deck, right? Because you're making decisions. Think of, think this game's a little less so, right? Because of the just the nature of this matchup. Mm -hmm. But, like, every decision you make with your cantrips, every decision you make with your discard spells is all leading you down a path of, like, what you're willing to lose to and what you're not willing to lose to. And so you have to be pretty confident so you can make decisions that lead to like minimizing what the possible things you lose to are, right? And and that's really, really hard for combo players. Yeah, I think that's the right take. I told uh, so Strong here um, that it was the correct take. Yeah, just draw an LED though. <laughs> okay. Um, so two, three, six mana. We're still short. Yeah, but notably, we can actually play by you and decay the the um, roof. No, the roof. Oh, the roof. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right, and so if we draw a dark ritual, we're still back in the same spot minus a little bit of life. I this actually isn't horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is not horrible. We're actually... Um, the only question is, do we want to... We don't have any ritual or anything to Infernal Tutor for, so yeah, we're just going to pass. So playing around Mind Break Trap, one of the bad downsides of that is not having it in your hand to, like, Infernal Tutor for, right? So, I mean, there is, like, some things that you lose when you do things like that. Wait, when are we playing but, around Mind Break Trap? When we played out the Lotus Petal LED... But now LED is not in our hand to Infernal Tutor for if we wanted to for some reason. Oh, I, I see what's... Yeah. Like, if we drew another Infernal Tutor, it would have been really annoying that we couldn't Infernal Tutor for LED. Mm -hmm. But we did that to play around Mind Break Trap. So, like, that's an example of making a decision to play around something, if that makes sense. My guess is we... 
they kept a hand with Dossies on the play, and they just whip on land. Are they just green sunning here and natural ordering? So the, the one benefit on our side is I do know their list because they're playing our list. Or my list. Okay. Uh, and one thing that we don't have to play around is our is counter knowledge kind of reach. Yeah. Because like green sun and then green sun and then uh, going to get Archon is like kind of punishes. They know about Decay. So that makes... Uh, since they know about Decay, it makes their oof a little bit worse, right? Mm-hmm. Interesting here that they're going to tap out, though. Yeah, what are they doing here? Yeah, it's punishing specifically because we we have Decay and not uh, Dress Down in our hand. So we have a count, uh, question from Legacy Council here, Mike. So, yeah, so Odawara is, like, I guess you would have to tell me what you're bouncing with Odawara, right? Like, what are you bouncing that Abrupt Decay, um, Dress Down, Chain of Vapor, Echoing Truth doesn't hit? Or, and, and, and that can include things, like, that people can counter, right? Like, it's uncounterable, right? But so is Abrupt Decay, so is... Beseju and stuff, so like, what are you bouncing? I think it's just too expensive is the problem. The funny yeah, thing it adds is, blue mana. The funny thing is, uh, it would bounce the Archon, but again, Dressed Out already achieves that. Exactly. So one card, are they going to show it to us? What would you What would you play around here? So Abrupt Decay, the, uh, the Collect Roof. What, what do you think, like, can you tell what their card in their hand is just by how they played this? Do you have any I, idea? I suspect it's natural order. Okay. Based, based on the way that they're playing. I, I so so here we can pip. So here's the thing, right? If, if you think it, this is really important. So we actually have a land drop, right? So we can, I think we can do everything here. So follow me real quick. First, right? Wait, 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 wait. Let's just talk through this here. So we have a land drop. If we didn't have a land drop, it's important though. So if we duress, then we can, we have six mana. Uh, we can do everything here. Yep. So, duress first. And we have a land drop. At, we have a land drop when we add nauseum. Okay, so now we're going to add nauseum. So, we're going to Lion's Eye Diamond. Hold priority. Infernal Tutor for Past in Flames. So, uh, Infernal Tutor, hold priority. Crack for black and red. Black, red. I did this math before. I hope I was right. I, I don't actually recall, but I think I'm correct. So, past in flames. Uh, and then cast it. We don't need red. Black. Nope, nope. And then you can dark ritual up to four. Uh, Infernal tutor. Go get lion's eye diamond. And then we can flashback ad nauseum. And then we still have a land drop, but we only have one Lion's Eye Diamond in our in our deck. Do we want to get, get Lion's Eye Diamond? We could get Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual is better because it leaves a Lion's Eye Diamond in our deck. So yeah, that's a good point because okay. we have a threshold. That, that's what I was thinking yeah. because we had threshold. Yeah. Right, and then it's a zero versus a two. And it's good on the flashback, the flash flashback. Right, right, right. All right, so we just need to hit a land and then some ritual, like a land and a dark ritual. There's Lotus Petal, all land is lethal. That's lethal, right? Nine, ten. Yep, that's it. You don't need to do it anymore. Right? Land, Lotus Petal, Cabal Ritual, Tendrils. Oh, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right, yeah. We did it. We did the 4-1. Not bad. <laughs> I know, right? Not bad. Uh, it doesn't matter, right? It, 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 yeah, Petal's black. It doesn't matter. We get lucky occasionally. You got target. What did he zenith for? Uh, he zenith for um, 
visionary, I believe. If Wait, I'm that right. was the last round, right? I'm not crazy. That was, I think he thought. Oh, I think he's uh, mixed that up. Okay. Oh, he he's zenith for Dryad Arbor. Oh yeah, he's. Yeah, I don't know. Is there a reason you would for Dryad Arbor? Could you go get Endurance there? Oh, Shepherd's probably better. Yeah, because yeah, Shepherd's just lethal the next turn. Right. I, I think I think from our opponent's perspective, you just hope you get another turn and then you kill the next on the on the crackback, right? Yeah, which Shepherd does that. Yeah. And it plays around discard. You, you, like I've I've gone to these situations in the when I've been on the other side of this matchup. Like the only reason why I thought the last hand could the last card could be natural order is because, um, they were like one mana short, right? I thought that could be the last card, and they just want lethal next turn. But I think you want to play around discard too in that situation because you can't really bluff anything, right? Like it could be mind break trap, but he didn't have a bounce spell. Uh, he didn't have a uh, a symbiote for endurance, right? No, he did not. Okay, so yeah, he can't. I mean, he couldn't bluff endurance there either. Then. No, we didn't see the opener, but the opener. I mean, I, I think obviously the fact that you drew the land and your opener and your hand was that strong. I think it was clearly a keep, right? Like, yeah. Um, so, can so you, if you wanted to just talk for a minute or something, I just need to be right back, like a minute. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, so strong. Uh. I'm assuming your hand was like Thoughtseize, Once Upon a Time, Cradle, maybe like Reclaimer, Burst, or something along those lines, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but okay, that that's exactly what it seemed like based on the way the game played out. Uh, I would keep that 100 times out of 100 because it, with this deck and with Once Upon a Time, because we're playing, we are accepting the fact that we will miss every once in a while. And the miss rate is only about 20%, and... If you mulligan, the chance of missing is already around, I want to say, 83% or something along those lines. It's like not by much. So that hand is already exactly what we want. And if we mulligan, we're just as likely almost to miss again. Uh, and it, again, this is like doing the homework beforehand. You know what the percentages are and you know, and if you don't care about doing the homework, you just take my word for it that once upon a time, in most cases, you just accept. Every once in a while, you're gonna lose because of it, but uh, more often than not, it, it's gonna hit. And not even more often than not, but probably almost as close, or not probably, is almost as close as if you were to mulligan. So I definitely would've kept your hand, and that can happen every once in a while. It's even happened to me, like, obviously, I, even on stream. Um, I think the only thing I would've done differently, so strong, if you're still watching, is I would've probably green sun for, um, Given that you found the collector, I would have saved the green sun for uh, a shepherd and have a fast kill too, because you cannot give the ant player all day, and um, be and because you once upon a time for the collector oof, I think it didn't matter because we had the kill regardless. But um, you want to set yourself up for a kill the following turn. Uh, but it, uh, the good thing is it didn't really matter, right? But I think that's something to keep in mind because it also plays around discard, right? Like if for some reason, they drew a discard and they discard your green sun that you, that potentially is um, you're saving for a crater hoof, right? Like that feels bad. And I rather them beat us with removal because if they kept a removal hand, they're spending at minimum one mana, sometimes two. And you know that the removal is already pressured because you have an oof, so we have to remove that to win the game, right? Most of the time. That is a good point too. Yeah, because we have the oof in play, that's already stressing removal on their behalf. So even are you there? Say that again. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm back. We're good. I'm gonna give you a chance. Um, cause we talked about the deck construction a little bit earlier, but. Are there like certain flex spots that you you like kind of think about playing but you don't yeah for sure so i think massacre is the most notable one in the current build and surgical extraction i think those two are like surgical is kind of a nod to say hey 
it does something towards some unfair decks, so it's okay to have access. Plus, we have, what, 11 cantrips in our deck, so it's semi-reasonable to try and find a one-of. Do you bring it in against Show and Tell? Uh, I do. I do bring it against Show and Tell because the high roll of take it spike buys us a lot of time, and also taking a Force of Will is not the end of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it basically acts as, like, a another discard spell, if you will, in some situations. Um I think the Flusterstorm, the Chain of Vapor, the Carpets in this build, the Abrupt Decay, uh, and the Dress Downs are all pretty much locked in. The Echoing Truth, I, I have been back and forth with Hercules Recall. Mm -hmm. So the Echoing Truth just need to be a bounce spell. If you're really worried about 8-cast and some of the artifact-heavy decks, you can you can change those Echoing Truths to Hercules Recall. But they're, they are a 2 and a blue bounce spell of some sort. In the same numbers uh, or no? Yeah, in two. It's definitely two, but I think it's like basically if you want to beat a chalice, it like it's it, if you want to beat a chalice plus a um like one of the graveyard hate artifacts that they play, or you can bounce the constructs from Urza Saga. Like Hercules Recall just does a better job of it's the same thing versus eight cast because it bounces chalices, right? Mm -hmm. Um but it has more upside sometimes. Plus, it can bounce Trinispheres and, and Chalices against Mono Red. You can bounce a Trinisphere and a Chalice against Mono Red. Mm -hmm. um, so, Hercules Recall, if you really are worried about the, the Lockpiece decks, I think Hercules Recall might be better. Um, and then, basically, the cards that are missing from the sideboard, you could play Peer Through Depths, but I have found that Peer Through Depths is just really, really hard to cast in this deck. Mm -hmm. Um as, and as so, just a replacement over and not, right? In certain matchups. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like in the high pressure matchups where where they're pressuring your life, you would want it, but at the same time, those ones are kind of hard to develop your mana to turn on Cabal Ritual fast enough. Mm -hmm. Um to get threshold, that kind of becomes a problem. Where you have Burning Wish, it, it's more useful, right? I think it's definitely better in the Grixis deck in the sideboard than it is in my deck mm -hmm. boarding it in in replace of ad nauseum. Against Delver, as you saw, we don't have Ad Nauseum or an Engine card. You usually just Ave them, or you can pass in Flames. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Massacre is probably the other flex slot. So you could put, like, another Abrupt Decay in there. You could put, um, if you wanted, another Flusterstorm. A lot of people play, like, one more Flusterstorm. Or you could put, like, another Bounce Spell of some sort, either Chain of Vapor or another Echoing Truth or Dress Down or something. Yeah, it is really good. I, I have also tried, for what it's worth, like just for speaking purposes, I have also tried the Malevolent Hermits. It's kind of funny if you don't know the interaction. Malevolent Hermit stops Chalice of the Voids, Force Negations, and Flusterstorms from 8-cast. Mm -hmm. Because if you play the flip of it, it stops all your spells from getting countered. Mm -hmm. And because it's a creature... Force of Will is the only card that counters that card, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it can beat Chalice on 1, Chalice on 0, Flusterstorm, Force Indigation mm -hmm. after it's flashback. So I have messed with that card a little bit in my local game shop. Like, I think it's definitely a thing you could play. It can get a little bit awkward, but... What would you um, play it over? I would play it over the... Um, I would play it over the, like, Massacre and the probably surgical extraction i think are the two cards that i cut in my current build that i'm playing it is the massacres uh, strictly for dnc or is there another match that, that that comes in mind so it can come in it can come in against some of the stone blade decks that are playing canonists so some of those like esper vile decks you oh, can bring sure. it against those esper vile decks like any deck that that plays thalia canonist meddling mage like some of those are meddling mage decks right mm -hmm. so you can bring it in against them um, but I, I, I don't bring it in against elves or any of the other decks. So it's, it kind of depends on how many answers you want. Now that you have dress down the, the bad part is like massacre and like the blue, white, red mirror matchups. I don't play because, uh, they usually don't have enough creatures and abrupt decay is, is enough of an answer against them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's kind of a flex slot, but I just, I think that it makes the DNT matchup so much better. Just worth noting, if you're playing Hercules Recall over Echoing Truth, I would for sure have the Massacre, mm -hmm. because Echoing Truth is an answer to DNT creatures, and Hercules Recall is not. That right? So, so I would definitely have the Massacre if you're playing Hercules Recall. Okay, so from what I understand, the flex spots tend to be the Massacre, the Surgical Extraction. Is the Besageous... I forget which one else do you say. 
yeah, the Baseju can be a flex slot if you want, and then that's those are pretty much the, in my opinion, the flex slots. Everything else is. So, good. so I have a great uh, question here that is like less, you know, more. Um, I guess less more less competitive, but more so from a uh, just a collector's uh, question. I own a nice rebuild. Is that card just unplayable now? I own a really nice foil rebuild myself, and uh -huh. I definitely played it. I think it's unplayable now only because you have enough options with other cards, right? So when when you wanted to rebuild, mm -hmm. you basically wanted it against the the mud decks mm -hmm. back in the day, and now that mud's not really a deck, I I just can't. I don't know. I, I, I can't get myself to play it. And you also have to think there's spheres in like lands decks, right? The lands deck plays sphere resistant. And so three mana is just worse. If you want that effect, you want Hercules recall. Mm -hmm. But some of those old degenerate lock piece decks with... Uh, with three ball, right? I'm, well, three ball, but they had way more stuff back then, right? They had so many permanent eights that you wanted to rebuild and you wanted to be able to cycle it if you were just like wanting to kill them really quickly if you didn't need it. Mm -hmm. But I think with the current configuration of the metagame, it's it's not defensible anymore, unfortunately. Okay, and so that, that makes a lot of sense. That's kind of what I was hinting at. That's why I said probably not a competitive Ooh. question. But um, the other thing I wanted to touch a base on is, um, is there merit for the Empty the Warrens as a replacement... Um, some, as against Delver, or, or is Abe just, in your opinion, uh, too much too much similarity where you didn't feel like it was worth the slot? Yeah, I, I don't think it's worth the slot, and there's a couple of reasons. The first one is Carpet of Flowers kind of negates the issue of mana. Sometimes, uh, sometimes mana is an issue, right, against some decks, and four mana is definitely less than five mm -hmm. for... Uh, like a Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor, and Lion's Eye Diamond make four mana after you're done with it. Mm -hmm. And so mana is an issue, but most of the matchups where you want Empty the Warrens, you have Carpet of Flowers and other ways to make mana. So that's one reason. The other thing is with Elves on the uptick, I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but I know that the Delver decks have some sort of end the festivities, rough tumble, etc., and I don't want to have, I don't, I don't understand why when we can have a definitive kill with creatures, why we would play a card that gives them outs. <laughs> no, Does that, that, that sense? is definitely fair. Like, uh, obviously I tried to be, uh, impartial, but the word on the street is elves is secretly one of the best decks right now. Um, yep. and I think you would probably agree with that, right? Like not, not only is it just secretly one of the best decks, but it's notably picked up some more pilots. Uh, I think most are probably from what I've seen on the Netto build, but um, only because it's a little bit easier to pick up if you never played Elves before. Um, are you building your 75 with Elves in mind or no, in general? Um, I'm not because the way, the way that this deck's constructed, I feel fine against elves and i don't think the thing the way that elves operates right where it has discard it has oof and it has a relatively fast kill mm -hmm. i don't think that there's any haymaker cards in the sideboard that ant would ever play that would change the matchup mm -hmm. right it's like you have some number of cards like dress down abrupt decay and stuff that answer your your hate cards mm -hmm. and that's really all you want when you're playing a deck like Ant. You want some answers to the cards that your opponent's playing to, that, to stop you from winning. Uh -huh. And I think we have enough of those. I don't think that if I changed the sideboard one to two cards, even if I thought Elves was really popular, like back in the day we used to have a Pyroclasm in the board. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's maybe that's an argument, right? Like if Elves was super duper popular, maybe I would have a Pyroclasm. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I just don't, th I think Dress Down now has been so good that because it can trips also that I think that Dress Down is just better than Pyroclasm at this point. It, it, it's funny you mentioned that because not only is Dress Down on color because it's relevant in some of the D&T decks, right? Um, I remember when I was streaming like a few months ago and Ant was at the time not seeing too much play aside maybe from uh, Ed. Um, you mentioned that, oh, because I know Cyrus, uh, liked the stress downs as well, because when he visited yeah. me here, uh, and, and Max Thorshin, uh, he borrowed my ant deck and then played, I didn't have Basajus at the time, so 
we changed a few of the slots, but more or less very close to what we played here. There, there was no surgical, no massacre, uh, but he did have notably, uh, I think, two decays, two echoing troops, I think maybe even two chains. Uh, obviously, that's a rap reference, but then... Um, <laughs> Accidental pun, but um, more very. Your, I think the main deck was essentially the same as yours, minus the Besage, because I didn't own it at the time, and I even picked up the Abe for for uh, when he borrowed the deck for the uh, local event, but or it's just a weekly event. The dress down, notably, I mentioned you mentioned on stream that you've been playing. I was like, oh, I really hope this is not a thing because uh, while annoying in the fair matchups. Like, Elves can typically power through a dress down. It's not too bad. In the unfair matchups, especially against something like High Tide, dress down against Elves is often a time walk. And Yeah. I think... How, how is your experience with that card against Elves? Like, do you use it proactively a lot or, or mostly just before you kill? So it, it depends, right? One of the cool things... I was actually just going to allude to that when you said that. One of the cool things you can do is in your own end step, you can dress down to stop Shepard from killing. Mm -hmm. Right. So like in that does come up if I'm worried about like a natural order uh, because maybe I duress them and I had to take green sun zenith for oof. I can kind of do both things. I can use green sun zenith to take oof mm -hmm. and then I can or I can use duress to take green sun zenith for oof and then I can leave them with a natural order and I can end step that to make it so they don't have a kill the following turn. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I kind of was also alluding to with having to understand the matchup. Right. Like. It's very easy to say, oh, okay, take take natural order and then end step uh, dress down for oof, but then you could die to like Allosaurus Shepherd activating and killing you, right? So right, right. you have to respect that they could have it. Exactly. Exactly. And so that that was kind of my point with understanding the the texture of the matchup. And so dress down is great. I think obviously most times it is you end step it, it plays around endurance, it plays around your um, guy for Bog, your Elvish Reclaimer for Bog, and it also plays around Oof. So it's obviously excellent against Elves, but I, there are definitely times where I've drawn two of them, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to use one to Time Walk and Cantrip, and then I'm going to use one to stop Oof to try and kill them. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure at some point this is going to be on your uh, achievement un unlock, right? Where the Elf player is on something like three lands, two of them are Arbors. That is an auto time walk in my opinion because it's just de debilitating for the elf player if that happens. Yeah, absolutely. It's very disgusting. <laughs> I, I've definitely seen it like out of like I know uh, forget who it was. I think it might have been some high tide player was doing it against me and just like felt miserable where they were virtually time walking me every turn, right? Because in the fair matchups you can recover from something like that, but the problem is in an unfair matchup by the time that you they you know, top time walking you, right? You're just dead to like high tide combo or, or in this case, uh, a, ten, a lethal tendrils of agony, right? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think there was one more question I was going to ask. And I just don't remember off the top of my head what it is. Uh, oh, actually, since we're on the elves topic, um, what would you say the percentages are against the two variants? And, um, or are, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, I, again, I think it's really weird. So I feel favored against elves. If you ask me, I feel I feel favored against it. But at the same time, like I said, I think that people can play really aggro-y instead of... So like you can cast all your cantrips looking for a super fast kill mm -hmm. and not keep cards like Dress Down in your hand and then lose to top deck green sun zeniths and things like that, right? You actually have quite a few cards in your deck that if you top deck them, it messes up just the whole concept of going cantrip, cantrip, looking for a really fast kill. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that the Nettle Sentinel version is actually scarier, though, because they combo faster than us. And they still have access to Green Sun Zenith for oof. Mm -hmm. So the, I think that in a nutshell, um, that, that version is scarier. But I only think it's scarier because we post board dilute our deck a little bit with cards like dress down and cards like um to, abrupt decay to try and like slow them down and they have a faster kill than us Got right you. Or th than you do um and you already have notably you already have endurance right and so since you already have endurance the yeah, elvish reclaimer for bog right 
yeah, is is like sure, I am going to lose to that some percentage of the time. Mm-hmm. But Elvish Reclaimer for Bog gets eaten by Dress Down just like Oof does, like we talked about. Dress Down answers endurance, uh Bog and it answers Oof. Mm-hmm. So my answers kind of line up against all of your all of what your deck does, whereas Nettle Sentinel just killing me faster is scarier. That makes a lot of sense, and uh, I think I would agree with that in general. Yeah, if the, the way that the game, because you're kind of the way the games play out, I think you you can't really, in most cases, unless you know the coast is clear, really go for the graveyard hey, uh, line, right? Is, I think that's a major reason. Is that accurate? Yeah, I I think that in most cases I don't go for past in flames, and if we do, it's basically because. We thought seized you, and you didn't have trap, but you had endurance. For right. example, like like that's a way that we would end up going for the graveyard line. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, the game against elves still typically ends pretty quickly mm-hmm. because your deck can top deck natural order just to kill me. And so ad nauseum, if I put it on the stack, is almost always going to be enough because. We board out Ave, uh-huh. and also you don't really pressure our life unless you're going to kill us. And so I think that the fact that Ad Nauseam is a pretty safe against Elves, even though you have creatures to attack with, is another reason that Pass in Flames is not as necessary. Pass in Flames against something like Delver is a lot more necessary because our life is pressured, which makes Ad Nauseam worse, if that makes sense. Can you say that last sentence again? So, to a chat. Yeah. no, you're good. Because you do not actually pressure us as much as it seems like you would being a creature deck, mm-hmm. Ad Nauseam is very safe against Elves a lot of the time. Um, whereas, like, against Delver, Ad Nauseam's not safe, right? And you need to piff. Against you, I do not need to piff most of the time. No, that, that makes a lot of sense because um, usually the damage from Elves is in burst. It's not by, it's not like linear, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think that all makes sense. I think there was something else, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, oh, do you like Veil of Summer against Elves or no? I think we boarded it out, right? Yeah, this is super funny, actually, because I think in my head, I always thought Veil's fine because you it can stop dot seizes right and stuff like that Mm -hmm. but then i thought about it and james johnson who's in the storm cabal with us and he plays a lot too he's like jj giant right or giant yeah jay the giant slayer yeah um he he told me and it makes sense it's really only good on like turn one or turn two right anything Mm -hmm. past that the chance of you top decking a discard spell is pretty low compared to everything else you have in your deck Uh and so Veil stuck in your hand if you don't have Lion's Eye Diamond as well. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's just, yeah, I, and, and you have to cast a blue or a black spell for it to cantrip, so you, you can't just cycle it too. Yeah, I do play that. It's not Bug, it's a Bant opposition deck, but I do play that from time to time, Laura, for fun. Yeah, yeah I, I've never I play... been on the other side, Mike, of the uh, of that Veil of Summer where, like, I go turn one Cs and I see the... Uh... The veil in their hand and just kind of laugh, right? And take something else. Because exactly. So on, on the play, you could convince me that it might be worth having. But also on the play, there's a good chance that we want to either discard you or cast a cantrip, right? And that's probably better in, in the matchup. Not only that, I think with L's respecting... Um, or at least the first... Maybe diversifying is probably the better word. The, the hate more now, like... There is a realistic chance in the range of keeps that Elf player kept a turn to Oof or a hand with Mind Break Trap. And if that's the case, you just went down a card for no reason. And talk exactly. To yourself, yeah. That's also totally notable. Mind Break Trap does not get stopped by Veil Summer, so that, that is also extremely notable as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we leave Ad Nauseam like Demonic Tutors does? Okay. So, first of all, we have Carpet of Flowers. He does not have Carpet of Flowers. Right, so Carpet of Flowers helps immensely in the Delver matchup because Carpet of Flowers allows us to kind of get ahead on mana, which he needs Ad Nauseam to get ahead on mana because he's playing Grixis. That's one reason. The second reason is because we have cards like Abrupt Decay in our deck to answer, um, to answer what's the counterbalance, we can play the matchup a little bit slower 
then he can. He does not have a good answer for counterbalance, right? Because he doesn't have a good answer for counterbalance, he has to go faster and ad nauseum goes faster. But ad nauseum loses to, like, if you're past, like, turn three or four, ad nauseum is basically uncastable. And we also, notably in the matchup, have Ave in our deck. And ad nauseum and Ave do not work well against a deck that puts pressure on you. I would much rather have Ave against Delver than I would ad nauseum. And I definitely don't want to ad nauseum into Ave against Delver. So, I mean, I think that's why the green version doesn't, mm -hmm. in my opinion, keep it in. So I, I, I talk about this a lot, and um, uh, Mike, I think, I don't remember if you have this or not, but I can send it to you, it's not a big deal. Um, there are, I, I've mentioned this to Cyrus, and he, he agrees, but I don't know if he's just being nice, obviously. Uh, I think there is a lot of similarities between the way, at least Mike and Cyrus and some of the other prominent uh, amp players, um, especially playing the green version, right? Like plays the deck compared to uh, the way that we play, or I play the Reclaimer list. Namely, it's kind of like you sculpt the uh, your hand in with Ant, and then with Elves, you sculpt the board with Reclaimer. And then you don't really, you can't go fast, but in most situations, especially in against a fair deck, you pick maybe the turn before you're going to die, or if you know the coast is clear, then you go for it. Uh, I think the two decks kind of play very similarly, and then I think you've seen enough of my streams. Do you agree with that assessment, or or do you think there's a little bit more nuance to that? I mean, I definitely think there's nuance, but I do agree with it. Like, it, again, if you go back to Demonic Tutor's Ed with his build, uh -huh. without having uncounterable removal spells in your colors, mm -hmm. you do not get the same inevitability that we get in green, right? Exactly. Uncounterable removal spells give you more inevitability than not having that obviously mm -hmm. so and and i think that to your point nettle sentinel versions need to go faster right because that's what their deck does whereas your version has a little bit more play to it so i i would kind of equate those two to being similar your your version is a little bit more methodical you have more answers you have more ways to kind of grind and manipulate the game state and you can eventually get through things by having those answers in your deck i.e caracas in your deck or bog etc mm -hmm. whereas and and multiple cradles right. whereas we can go get uncounterable removal spells as well as we have more discard spells that will make the matchup better as time goes on yeah i think the so, word that i used uh maybe two nights ago was pacing and i think it sounds like you're on you, you agree with that that sentiment then in terms of yep. like the two decks kind of playing out obviously very different decks but in terms of uh compared to their um their brethren or their counterpart right like ant compared to ts and obviously the reclaimer version versus the metal version i think like the there's a what's the word i'm looking for it's a um elves is to ant i think at or reclaimer is to uh ant as maybe the nettle is to ts is the analogy yeah that's a that's i think that's pretty fair for sure Something I brought up, actually, and let me know, actually, um, if I, this is an article I wrote on Patreon, like, a little bit a while ago, and I don't know if you've seen it or, or whatnot. I, I know I brought it on stream before, but I want to share it real quickly. Um, also, I think I'm feeling kind of tired, so is one league okay? I think we can run it back, like, in the future as well. Yeah. But I, I think we want, I think this is, like, very in, informative, and then we can just, like, after this discussion, maybe, um call it yeah well, one second uh i want to bring up something i wrote like kind of recently and then i want to share um this is like from patreon from may that i wrote and i talk about like golgari combo in general right like and i think there are a lot of similarities similarities between ant and um and elves obviously and obviously i mentioned some of the the tech um, cards that I've, uh, you know, gotten ideas from Jax and, and some of the uh, other, uh, from Jax specifically, right? Like, namely the printing of Vesejo, I think, has been a big boon to uh, both Ant and Elves. Um, I don't know if it applies to Depths at the moment, but, like, Chain of Smog, I think Jax has mentioned to me, uh, it's something that he wants to play and replace the Abrupt Decays with. Uh... 
do you have any comments on that or like do you have have you seen this i can send it to you by the way yeah i did read through this and yeah i think that you're you're totally right right like the more the more broad that your answers get the reason beseju obviously is notable is it's a land right and also it's uncounterable but i think that the more broad that your answers get and the more low cost your answers get the the better it is, right? And so when you start seeing Beseju, which only needs one color also, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't need, it doesn't need black to cast Beseju. Uh -huh. It starts overlapping into other types of decks where it gets better, right? And also as answers get more broad, removing restrictions gets better, right? So you basically weigh out things like a creature or being CMC three or lower as being more detrimental, right? And those are kind of, how you have to think about when they print these new cards. And I think that Beseju is exactly a card that we wanted. Again, it's still uncounterable, but it's pretty flexible and it fits in multiple different archetypes. It is the is the split between Decay, um, namely in case you need to answer hate bears, is that the main reason? Yeah, yeah. Hate bears in our in, in our world are a really big deal and that's the split. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense because um, we kind of glanced over it a little bit, but you, I'm glad you brought it up, where uh, the fact that you can channel out a Baseju off a basic island against some of these, like, Moon Stompy or, like, Wasteland decks, right? Off a basic yeah. island and the end step, whatever you fetch, let's just say uh, either Bayou or... Um, or a Lotus Petal, honestly, against Blood Moon, too, right? If Blood Moon's in the mix, that, that's... That's a good point, yeah. Off a yeah. Lotus Petal and, like, a basic island or a Trop or Bayou and a, ba and a basic island... Is yeah. just pretty incredible, and I've noticed like uh, I've noticed that come up before, right? Like, obviously in elves they played abrupt decay for a long time, and the fact that I can just you know end step channel kill like a cannonist or spirit of the labyrinth is just huge off like cradle man or whatnot. What do you what do you mean? Uh, so TWN like I I understand what you're saying. Like sometimes conceptually creatures and spells are hard to compare, right? Like, but at the same time. They're both combo decks that went on, like, turn three to turn four-ish, like, sometimes turn two, turn one, right? But, like, they're really, like, a turn three combo deck, and they, both of our decks are playing interaction with our opponents versus less interaction and more speed, right? So, like, the whole reason that we're comparing to, like, Tess and Nettle Sentinel version is because our versions say we want to be a little bit slower and have a couple more answers rather than be a little bit faster and a little bit less resilient, right? Right. I think that that's kind of the the concept of comparing Nettle Sentinel or not Nettle Sentinel, um, Reclaimer Elves to to Ants. Obviously, they're different decks, but they're both combo decks, and they both have the same philosophy of Shepherd's BS. Okay, maybe we can't convince you then. If if that's your opinion, yeah, yeah you might not I, be convincible. I think, twin, <laughs> if, if, I think if that's your argument, Twindom, then I it, it's kind of hard to have a conversation because I actually think um, my opinion is Shepherd's a little bit overrated in the sense that I think a lot of these control players also um, don't realize what they need to kill. For instance, like uh, something that comes up a lot is like I win on turn eight or ten, right? And then the, uh, I get salted at by my Tundra player saying, oh, Shepard is BS. But in my mind, it's like, oh, you lost the game really on turn two when you didn't kill the Elvish Reclaimer that tapped out for Cradle, right? Like, Yeah. Like, elves is really mana hungry. Like, I don't think people realize that removing Elves' ability to make mana is, is a really successful way to win the game. And Reclaimer is a big part of that, getting, getting multiple Cradles... And stuff like that, right? Without walking into a sweeper is the is the big part, right. right? Like you you develop your board and your opponent just doesn't. Let's just say, they, especially if they have sorcery speed sweepers, like what are you gonna do? Like your opponent is has a cradle on board now. They have a fetch land and a, a reclaimer and another land. Technically, you can die next turn, and they only have one creature. Are you gonna sweep? Like they, you get put in these weird situations, right? Because if you don't sweep there. The fetch land is another arbor, and the reclaimer can reclaim for another arbor, so that's two. And suddenly, if you tap out, then it's lethal, right? Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a really good point. Like sometimes people just play differently. I mean, honestly, is yeah, is is shepherd scary? Sure, but like at the at the same time, like shepherd is 
what, like, essentially kind of a veil plus, uh, like, a combo card. Like, I mean, it's good for sure, but I'm not sure that it's that it's too good. Like, look at some of the cards. Look at Prismatic Ending. Like, how is Prismatic Ending not a messed up magic card? Right? I think like, Legacy, like, we had this discussion, or at least it's been talked about, like, Max Dorshin uh, and a few other people I know that I'm friends with that I've seen. If your deck is not doing something really messed up, it's probably not a competitive legacy deck. Like, honestly, right. like, every deck is doing stuff that is probably frustrating for the opponent. And whether that is, like, killing turn one with Tendrils of Agony, you know, putting a Gristle Band... Urza's, Urga's, Urza's Saga being a one-card combo. Like, <laughs> there, there's so many messed up cards in Legacy. Like, and I, I would put all of those pretty similar. Shepard is just... Shepard just, when it feels bad, it feels bad, right? But right, what, what feels worse... What feels worse than like going turn one saga, turn two ancient tomb, and not needing to cast another spell to really win the game? Like, yeah, what feels worse than that? Man. Yeah. Uh, like, also, I, the only thing is Shepard. Also, I know it's like frustrating gameplay. Like nobody's gonna dispute that, but a lot of like a lot of legacy is frustrating gameplay. Like losing to wasteland, losing to days turn one like uh, DRC bauble flip like uh, delirium, and then danger turn one drop like. That's just backbreaking gameplay. Or like losing to a lands player that just like recurs wasteland over and over and over. Like if yeah. your deck is not doing something broken, in my opinion, it's probably just not a competitive legacy deck. Yeah, and, and I also think like when you when you consider everything else too, right? And you consider things like doing really broken things, but then you also consider why the format is fun, right? Like the format is also fun because Things like Brainstorm reduce variance in some of the blue decks, right? Like, you don't have as many non-games. I think that's interesting. I think not having games that are non-games is super interesting. Mm -hmm. I also think that there is a lot of intensive decisions with cantrips, right? Like, you have to make a lot of really hard decisions when you're casting powerful cantrips. Mm -hmm. And I, it might be a... A difficult like conversation but i think days is really good for the format right because i think days keeps combo decks in check and i also think that days is one of the cards that it's just it's an archetype right and it gets beat up by certain big control decks it gets beat up by certain things but i think that the way that legacy is constructed it's super healthy i think that we're in a situation right now with delver where when you have a super powerful days wasteland deck mm -hmm. If the engines and the threats are too powerful, it feels like a like an unfun broken deck that is too good. And that's that's kind of the rub is do you keep banning the cards that make it too powerful or do you get rid of one of the cards at its like base like days, right? But I think that if you take away days, you take away like an identity of the format is the problem. Yeah, and I think a lot of people agree with that, Romario, but I think that Days is like an identity of the format. It is tempo. A tempo deck is what Days is. I, I and think, I think that that's healthy. Yeah, I, I personally don't have... Obviously, we're biased. Um, I'm, I'm obviously biased because I play a deck also that doesn't, for the most part, care about Days, even pre-Shepard. Um, because you're, I'm just losing a 1-1, right? Uh the only thing about banning days, I will say, is uh, keep in mind that days is typically only played in one deck. Um, it is problematic, I will say, that um, so days in a combo deck like Doomsday is potentially kind of egregious, right? For some of these non-blue decks, like they go turn one, dark ritual, Doomsday, days, whatever you do, like that's like backbreaking gameplay. But um, yeah. But so is like forcible or pact negation or something else in a degenerate deck, right? Like, I I agree with you. I think that I I think that the combo decks without days in the format, I think you guys are heavily underestimating how much more of a problem turn one decks would be without a card like days in the format. I think that I like I truly believe that that's a big negative of removing days from the format is your you have less answers than just some force of wills against pretty degenerate things, right? And it's not it's not just that days counters those degenerate things, it's that days being into the format makes it so people build their decks differently and I don't think you're grasping the full 
effect of getting rid of days as the card just being gone, right? And people are building decks differently because they don't need to beat the card days, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you said. I think we had a question here uh, about expressive iteration. Um, you want to go first or should I? I, I think EI, I think card advantage in a Delver deck is dangerous. I think any any card advantage in Delver is a recipe for kind of ruining, like being too good, right? Like I think, and this is where Sadra I think said is Darcy is really powerful, but at its at the end of the day, Darcy is not card advantage. Darcy plus EI to get them up cards I think is the actual issue. I think EI being card advantage is a problem in a tempo deck because card advantage undoes the things like days and stuff that are card disadvantage to them, right? Like, I think that that's the problem is if you have too much card advantage in a Delver deck, then it's late game becomes too powerful. And the whole point of a tempo deck is if you beat the initial tempo from the tempo deck, then it's you it can't beat like a good resolve threat but ei allows them to grind out games that they have no business still grinding out yeah i, I think um at least historically like well i guess we're gonna have it the caveat that um we assume wizards of the coast is not gonna touch some uh you want to call them pillars or just accepted like broken grandfathered in cards like brainstorm ponder fetch lands and I think you can even love to be honest, days into that. I, like I, I don't think days is gonna be banned anytime soon, or, or even worth. Uh, like, w how you feel about the card is one thing, but I, I, my personal opinion and is I don't think they're gonna touch it regardless of what the um, the public th wants. Uh, so I think if you're looking for another ban, uh, historically they have banned some of these card advantage cards. Like, um, obviously the big one of recent memory. There's two, I guess. Uh, is uh, Dreadhorde, Arcanus, and uh, an Oko. So if they follow yeah, that they trend, e also EI has been banned in other formats, so it has there's a precedence there. Uh, so I think that is probably the most likely uh, candidate, I guess. Yeah, and I, I think also worth noting, right, is it, it is kind of sad, right? Because when you think of EI, I think EI is a great tool for control decks, and I think it's completely reasonable in a control deck. And I think it's the same way that top was super reasonable in, like, post. It was super reasonable in painter decks. It was cool in ant, but it, sometimes it's just too egregious in whatever deck it's egregious in to where it's better just not in the format, right? But I think Top is a very good example that's comparable to EI of a card that is actually not uh, like too powerful of a card, but in the deck that it was kind of banned because of, it is too powerful, if that makes sense. DRS is also fine. DRS in Elves, now that we have Alice or Shepard, maybe people would argue that DRS is too powerful, but I thought DRS in Elves at the time was not even too strong. I thought that in Grixis Delver with uh, Pyromancer, Probe, Therapy, like that is where it was a problem, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's, yeah, Sager, that's the point is like, it, if it's a problem in one deck though, what do you do? You don't really have a choice, right? Yeah, I actually had people ask me, hypothetically speaking, uh, if DRS for some reason got banned, unbanned, and I don't think it will, um, people ask me, what do you, what, what would it replace in the current iteration of Elves? Um, I guess I'll leave it up to chat and you. What do you think would I would do? Or at least where I would start? I I almost feel... So I think Birchler is is probably the, the main one, right? But then, like, I'm really curious if that makes Nettle Elves with better than Reclaimer, right? That would be my question for you is, is it possible that DRS replacing Reclaimer makes Nettle Elves just better because it kind of fixes a mana problem that 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 metal or that uh elvish reclaimer fixes in your opinion uh so that is a that is a great um i guess lead into the uh the question in that but uh i've already mentioned before multiple times my deck building philosophy is and shout out to jonathan zhang um 
if he is by chance, you know, uh, in the stream right now, I like to joke that force of negation is unfair, but he has jokingly, or at least half jokingly, told me multiple times, uh, the more fire cards you play, the better. So my deck building philosophy is typically you play the most broken cards and you, you make it work, right? So I will often say the best creature in elves, and in my opinion, a top two at least creature in legacy is Elvish Reclaimer. Um, so I definitely not cutting Reclaimer. And the way I would make it work is probably cut the weakest card in the deck, and that would be Birch Lord Rangers, and that's probably Heritage Druid. And I would start there, at least. Because they yeah. tend to be the worst creatures in the deck. Is there any world in which you would take out some of the some of the cards like Oof or some of the cards that are kind of a little maybe flex slot grist-ish to just be more streamlined game one? Or would you still want access to those types of cards? I think what I would do if, because Deathrite Shaman is disruption, as, because yeah. the way that Elves has gotten better, in my opinion, over the last, you know, I would say like we had a, we definitely had a breakout like in, at Eternal Weekend uh, 2021, November. And then since then, a couple of things have happened, right? Um, the Ragavan ban definitely, I think, has hurt Elves um, because of the splash damage. Uh, I think another thing that has happened is uh, the printing of Besaju, which has helped. But then I also, in between that, that time frame, I think the Nettle version really got hated out because of the good general performance from Elves uh, during Eternal Weekend. Yeah. I think what ends up happening is um, Deathrite Shaman will give... One of the things about the, the Reclaimer version is sometimes you don't have these really explosive uh, turn, turn two plays that sometimes the Neto version can align if there's like no disruption. Uh, and I think having a Mana Dork uh, in addition to Green Sun Zenith will help Elves... Uh, a lot right so I, that, go ahead i was gonna say the the only thing when i start to think about drs though is one of the reasons drs is so good is also because of its like double down for graveyard hate and so then you start to think of like endurance you start to think of like going to get uh going to get uh bajuka bog and how some of those cards seem redundant to playing Deathrite Shaman, right? Um, I think yes and no. I think it doesn't hurt. So what I mean by that is like, um, I've had people tell me I need to play F4 Al Sorship. And I was like, well, I think I can get away with three, right? It's one thing to be able to get away with three. It's another thing to play the full set and just like completely stress your opponent's removal. Um, so I think... Actually, to go back and answer your other question, I think what we could, would see is we see the Endurance go to the sideboard because we just don't need it uh, main deck because of more disruption. The Collector Oof, I think main deck would be a uh, meta call. You can move into the sideboard if you want to be cleaner. Uh, but I think it is so unique in its ability. And the uh, and because Elves, especially with Death Rite Shaman, you would have actually more consistent access to it turn two. I would actually lean towards keeping the Collector Oof and I would see potentially... Minus two Heritage Druid, minus one Birch Lore, minus one Endurance, and then plus four Death Rite Shaman, and just like max out on all these broken cards. Would, would you change Bog to something else main and have that in the board, or would you leave it? I would leave it. I think the card is just incredible. Because yeah. it hasn't come up here today, but like, you just have these sometimes hands where you go turn one Reclaimer, for instance, right? Obviously this will happen less if we play Death Rite Shaman, probably leading with that, right? But yeah. you just have these turn one hands where you just, oh, I'm just going to lead with uh, Reclaimer. And suddenly they're, they're Reanimator. You just have a free win out of nowhere. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I think that's how I would probably build it. I don't think we need Queer Ranger. I think the whole point is um, we just want to play the most uh, broken cards as possible and just... If it's a necessary evil the way Heritage Druid is, right? I think we probably still want the one because, like, being able to Green Sun for one, spend two mana, and go up to three the way that, um, you know, to tie back to Ant, right? Like, sometimes we want to go Infernal Tutor for, like, an LED or a thresholded um, Cabal Ritual. It's kind of a similar line, right? I think we still want the first Heritage Druid. Yeah. 
I, I think one of the other interesting thoughts of like, because only because we were on the talk track about Delver and and some people are, I feel like right now, Legacy is in a weird spot to where some people who are playing a deck that they've kind of tuned to be fine against Delver and at the same time, there's some people who don't like the format because Delver is so powerful. Mm-hmm. So what if if something changes pretty drastically in Delver though, what what does that do to the rest of the format? What do you think? Like, does that hurt elves if Delver gets worse? Like, what what are your thoughts? Because I know for me, I like Delver being the boogeyman, and the reason that I'm playing uh, Ant over Doomsday mm-hmm. is because I feel like you have to be an incredibly good Doomsday player to have even close, even close to a fifty fifty versus um, Delver, right? And so I think that Ant has slightly above fifty fifty versus Delver. I would say like. In my opinion, I'm like 60 to 65% versus Delver, but I would also understand that if it's an even pilot, it's probably 55, 45 or something in Ant's favor. Sure. But what happens if Delver gets worse? Like, what do you think? Do you think Elves is better, worse? Like, what are your thoughts? Um, I think that's actually really hard to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I think that's really hard to hypothesize because I think the first thing that we have to assume is how do the blue control decks adjust? Because now, are we getting to a point where Delver is unplayable, or are we getting to a point where Delver is... Let's just let's just say they gut the deck, right? Like, five cards get banned or something like that. And I think then control ch- can change, uh, changes dramatically, right? Like, I think they can probably beat combo again, which admittedly, they have a very difficult time at the moment, from what I understand. Um, yeah. Now, if Delver only gets one card or two cards banned... I'm not sure much changes, to be honest. Got it. So, I guess that that's the interesting part to me, then, is, like, it's really interesting that, that there hasn't been a move made on it if that's kind of the consensus. If it doesn't change much, then I guess the consensus is just the feel bad of banning new cards. Like, they don't, they don't want to ban new cards unless they feel like they absolutely have to. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I get, like, the... I mean, I... Not that I agree with it or or not, but the model for Wizards of the Coast that seems to be working at the moment is the more busted cards that they print and the more they delay the banning, the more profits, right? Especially to the EDH crowd, which Got I it. think is probably the majority of their profits. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say. Like, I think if Delver did get... I, I will say Elves is probably a beneficiary of Delver being the best deck um de- while de- elves is better against combo now than it's ever been because of the printing of endurance specifically i still think elves is like i mentioned this a few times like I- i'll lose to like tony scapone right like on stream yeah. all the time right of flame <laughs> right r- yeah. any right of flame deck basically or- that doesn't use the graveyard for the most part um i do not really want to see if they win on turn one um and i think delver does a good job of suppressing some of these decks yeah. So I guess the the last kind of thought that I had is like, did you see some of these tournaments in in Japan and then also uh in Europe? Uh I know Runcor uh Inigo, shout out to him. He's been really cool. Did you see some of the top eights that they've had? It's been super interesting how in paper it it's been pretty reasonable in terms of like the difference in, in top eight, uh what there's been versus online. Yeah, I, are you just talking in general or or or? I, well, I the like... the two most recent ones specifically had like one Delver deck in them. There's just not as much Delver in paper as there is obviously online, where it's easier to access all that. Yeah, I it's weird. Like I know in the Brazil, that's a good point. Like I know in the Brazilian community, like Delver is like not very played too for whatever reason. Um, so the metagame is just like off. I guess it's probably the best word I can and use. Yeah, I think Runcor's top eight was what like it had like a Lurin eight cast uh, mono red, uh, one control one Delver like it was literally all over the place. It was pretty cool the, to see. You talking about the one that uh, Runcor casted at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one I didn't see. I didn't check the top. Impact returns. Some of these like lists in Japan or like in Brazil, yeah, there's not a lot of Delver for whatever reason. Um, that reminds me actually, what is the logic behind that dizzy spell plus Alistair Shepherd tech like? What is the line there? Or can you elaborate a little bit on that since you reminded me now? 
the dizzy spell Allosaur Shepherd. Yeah. Uh, pull pull up that card. Can you pull up that card? The dizzy spell. Yeah. Sure. It's just a three mana tutor. Um, yeah, it can go get Shepherd, I think, and then Shepherd makes. Uh, hold on one sec. I need to look it up again. So Shepherd makes green spells uncountable, which makes Veil, I guess, uncountable. But that just seems like a lot to be jumping through hoops. Where's his list? Hold on, I need to pull that up. I, I, I knew what it was at the time, and I can't recall. I need to pull up that guy's list to see what the rest of his sideboard looked like. Um, hold on. Yeah, but that, yeah, so Romano brings it up. That, this is what I thought. It makes Veil uncountable, but then the problem is, like, what if you don't have the Veil in your hand? Then, then what does it get, right? You're just getting a Veil summon, I guess, maybe? Because Shepherd by itself seems kind of bad, right? Like in that deck. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I that's why I was saying I'm pretty sure it's it's mostly a meme. <laughs> okay, that's what I figured because the problem is Veil vale is fine, but the problem is Shepherd by itself seems pretty bad. Romar, am I thinking of this right? Isn't that the guy with like the beta dual lands and everything? And I think he has some really cool versions of some of those cards. Is that is that isn't that the guy I'm thinking of? I'm pretty sure he had just like a really really sweet version of that deck, and so he had some sweet cards in it. I'm not sure that, I, I'm not sure that it's actually the play. Okay, but. yeah. I the, see the thing is like, I would think that too, but the only reason why I pause is because it's a strange, it's strange to own a very nice version of Dizzy Spell. That that would be the only thing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it was the Dizzy spell or something else, but I, I'm not sure. I can't, I really cannot recall. I just remember seeing a Twitter picture or something of of uh, of like a sweet version with a bunch of beta dual lands and stuff, and it was that guy's list that had this. So I figured there had to be some sort of a reason why. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right, so I think here uh, I am a little bit tired. I apologize uh, for only one league. I think we can definitely run it back. I definitely had a lot of fun with you. Uh, just chatting it up tonight um any parting thoughts uh or if you want to leave like you know any, any parting thoughts you want to leave the uh the stream i guess before we raid uh presumably the legacy pit i mean on stream newton is undefeated with ant against elves so i think that's worth <laughs> noting we we got to point that out right like ant is clearly superior to elves and okay. so we, we we definitely uh we, i guess we um what's it called we settled it, right? So originally, I, I told Mike, I think it's pretty even, but uh, because Ant beat Elves, granted, with Mike's experience and against a uh, learning uh, soul strong here in chat, uh, we will finally concede Ant is unfavorable. Or actually, slightly unfavorable is the term I would use. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, no, I, I thought this was a lot of fun. Obviously, love to do it again, but I think that... Uh... 4-1's a good showing for the deck. We we beat Reanimator notably. We didn't run into any Chalice uh, Trinosphere decks, but we did run into Reanimator, which I think one super crazy deck like that, either Chalice or Reanimator in, a, in five matches, I think is actually pretty reasonable. On Magic Online, we got kind of lucky because I think normally it's more than that. Mm -hmm. But I think this was a good representation of uh, of a league, so it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. glad to... Uh... To have done this for you so i'll go ahead and raid the legacy pit now and then uh i'll what's it called i'll end the stream i guess one second yeah but uh yeah def so strong you do that <laughs> definitely had a lot of fun with mike and then uh we will definitely run it back soon um i've definitely enjoyed having romaro and a bunch of different uh people come on stream uh current as well obviously so once we raid, I will stop the stream and then we'll, I'll uh, talk real quickly with Mike offline.